in need of a crafting fix. There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hello, I'm Catherine Wright from Leicestershire Craft Centre based in Market Harborough. I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street family. I've been sewing since the age of seven when my mum taught me to sew. I particularly enjoy dressmaking and all through my childhood I made my own clothes uh, including dancing costumes and my prom dresses. But I also enjoy patchwork and bag making and hand stitching and embroidery and really anything textile based. The thing I particularly love about fabric and textiles and stitching is that there is always something new to try, there's always a new technique or a new skill to learn uh, and I really enjoy doing that. My top tip for new sewers is to uh, be friends with your iron. Your sewing also always looks better when it's been pressed and it's not like ironing your own clothes. It's much more, much better than that. And also to uh, build your skills up step by step. Don't launch in with the, with the wedding dress first off. You know, start with a simple dress and build your skills up and then you'll see good results right from the start and feel enthusiastic and carry on sewing. So really, just have a go, have fun. It's all about having fun and enjoying it. Um, so happy sewing. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Sewing Street on this beautiful Sunday morning, Remembrance Day. Uh, welcome to Sewing Street. I'm Stuart Hillard. It's wonderful to have your company this morning. We've got a packed morning um, uh, and I hope you'll be able to stay with us all day. Now, great news. One, a ten of you are going to win your entire shopping basket today. We ran this competition yesterday and 10 uh, shoppers won their entire baskets. That's going to happen again today. Should we have a little look at the winners yesterday? I recognise some of these names. Rosalie, Barbara, Nikki, Veronica, Lynn, Helen, Elizabeth, Alison, Lynn and Terry all won their shopping baskets yesterday. Uh, they've been contacted, I believe. And uh, so congratulations, you 10. How amazing. I told you, didn't I? I told you yesterday, 10 of you would win your shopping baskets. And you did. And today, another 10 of you will win your entire shopping baskets. If you shop with us today, check out today, you'll be automatically entered into that prize draw to win your entire shopping basket. I love that we've got a teeny tiny dolly shopping trolley there. It's not, a, not an adult size one. Gorgeous. 
Anyway, we, re we really enjoy having your company. Do remember to email in, message us in the studio, won't you? Uh, we do love to hear from you. You can email us, studio at sewingstreet.com. You can also message us directly on Facebook and um, that's a lovely way of getting in touch as well. But if you want to send a picture, the email is the best way to do that. Now let's start with our early bird. There they are, those little birds. Now our early bird today is a set of metal threads. Now you're getting eight threads here. They're a silk finish cotton. 100% mercerized cotton, 150 meters on each spool. I'm going to grab them out so they're nice big spools and they're all really useful colors. Now, $12.99 is the usual price. Let's grab them out there. What a great selection of colors. These are a real sort of sew all range. Of course, we've got our white and ivory, a navy a black, chocolate bound grey, this um, sort of mid-toned powder blue and a red. Ever so useful, brilliant for piecing. Let's take that price down, shall we? It's crashing down to 9 99 That's more like it. So, remember you're getting eight reels here, 150 meters. Now, most of the time I buy 100 meter reels of thread and they're about 140, 150. This is 150 meters on each reel and you're getting eight of them for less than 10 pounds. Great bargain. Now, let's do a little price comparison, shall we, to see what you could be paying for this thread set. There we go. Now, original price, 18.89. At reduced to $14.99, that's still five pounds more than our price. And that's more than what we would normally charge for this thread set. It does pay to shop around, doesn't it? But today's the day. Now, silk finish thread, um, what a wonderful, lustrous, quality that gives. The mercerization process gives the thread a gorgeous light sheen. So it has a more silky finish to it, um, just has a little bit more shine to it as well when you thread. So I mean absolutely lovely for doing things like top stitching and quilting. Um, but also you could use this for your piecing without a doubt. It would be absolutely perfect for piecing. And with 150 metres, uh, good for dressmaking too. So Mark and I, Mark Francis and I were talking yesterday about how a 100 metre reel of thread is never really quite enough unless you're making a pair of shorts to make a garment, say like a shirt or a dress. Whereas 150 metres, I would say, is absolutely sufficient to make most garments. Another price comparison. Let's have another look. They are reduced, but again, look, $14.99 from $18.89. So there we go. The full price should be $18.89. That makes our price just about half price, doesn't it, from what you could pay elsewhere. Eight reels of thread there. So in total, that is that 1,000 metres. Yeah, a thousand meters of thread. Lots of you multi-buying on this one. Is it one for you, one for a friend? Is it two for you? I wouldn't blame you. Because they're the kind of colors that are gonna be used year after year, aren't they? That mid-toned gray I use all the time. Cream, white, black, ever so useful. Ever so useful. And actually, you know, that blue, is another good colour for piecing because it's somewhere in the middle. It would blend with so many different colours. Smashing and Mettler we love. We do love our Mettler threads here. Just use a regular needle, a machine needle. You could use a universal. I tend to use, if I'm honest, I tend to use Microtex needles for the vast majority of my dressmaking 
and patchwork and quilting. And if you've never tried a Microtex needle before, they have a super slim, super sharp point on them. They come in different sizes and you can get large Microtex for things like bag making, but they just have this really slim, sharp piercing point. So they, they just, they don't leave holes almost in fabric, you know, they go through so cleanly. And a fine Microtex needle with a fine silk finish thread like this, great for improving the precision of your piecing. So that is our early bird special today. Just having a little look at the iPad. Lots of you watching. Patricia says, good morning, Stuart and the team. Love you all. I'm hand quilting in Blackpool. Sounds fantastic, Patricia. What a great thing to be doing. Uh, loads, loads of you with us this morning. It's always good to have your company. Don't forget to send us a little message or bob us an email. What are you working on today? Are you making something special? Are you having a quiet day knitting or crocheting? Just having a quiet day watching TV? Staying with us on Sewing Street. Cozy day at home. I Lovely. I do love a cozy day at home. Wrapped up in a quilt with Mrs Mills. <laughs> Now you know she's my cat. <laughs> Before you start spreading rumours. <laughs> oh my goodness me. Super giftable. Don't forget to check out before we run out of those. Remember, you only pay one postage and packing for the whole day, $3.95. Once it's paid, that's it, you're done. Doesn't matter how many times you check out your basket. And don't forget as well, you could be one of 10 lucky customers who win their entire shopping basket today. Just imagine if you bought yourself a sewing machine today. Today was the day you ordered your brand new sewing machine or uh, a full fabric collection or a lovely big kit to make a gorgeous quilt um, and this was the day that you won your shopping basket. Ten of you are going to, I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at today's menu and see what we've got coming up. Now at 8 a.m. this hour, we've got all sorts of gorgeous fabric bundles. Stick around for that. We've got some corkers. At 9 a.m. we've got the wonderful Catherine Wright, who I've spent the last hour with chatting and gossiping about all things dressmaking. Uh, she's got the K-Facet Ancient Glades Quilt Kit, which is the most gorgeous kind of collection of greens and blues. It's a big quilt. It's absolutely gorgeous. Then at 10 a.m. we've got, you can never have enough K-Facet, you can certainly never have too much. And we're really going to be focusing in on colour and some colour theory and looking at the colour wheel. We might sneak a little bit of Tim Holtz in as well. Um, then at 11 a.m. we've got the night sky wall hanging again with Catherine Wright. Beautiful. If you've got somebody in your family, maybe it's you, who absolutely loves astronomy and the planets or space, great, great new panel that. And then at 12 o'clock, it's a clearance hour. We've got all sorts of bargains, loads of lovely fabrics actually, some very, very desirable uh, pre-cuts in that hour. So well worth sticking around for, or indeed, bobbing on the website and pre-ordering. Now, if you check out at clearance, if the price hasn't already dropped, you will, of course, pay the lowest price. So um, at the moment, I think the price is not reduced at the moment. We'll have a look. We'll have a look. But you would always pay the lowest price anyway. Yeah, so at the moment, the 12 o'clock hour, all the prices are full price, but they are all going to crash. They're all going to come down. Um, so you'll pay the lowest price. Good to know. Now then, shall we have a look at the website? Let's have a look at how you can get involved, how you can shop. So if you go on to uh, the internet and then click on Watch Live. <laughs> Am I showing my age there? <laughs> You'll be able to see there at the top, watch live and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, our early bird special and our best seller. Are they ever different at this time of day? You can pop us a little message, up to 150 characters, 
Hello, I'm Hannah. You're shouting, Hannah. Mm. Exclamation marks for emphasis. Like it. And then if you go down two columns, you can click on pre-order and then uh, shop everything that's going to be featured on air today. There's Cave's Ancient Glades quilt kit. There's some lovely backing fabrics and battings. We've got some extra wides, some beautiful bundles and separate half meters of Cave facet and some 10 inch charm packs as well. A nice time to stock up on Cave. Joan, if you're watching, look at that. Oh, lovely. Some really nice colour bundles there. Greens, oranges, blues and greys. And then we're talking colour theory there. Free motion quilting, the colour wheel. Um, we'll talk about that. And then we're just all loving the new solar system fabric panels. How cool is that? How cool is that? Brand new and exclusive to us here at Sewing Stream. Like that. Ooh, now I'm thinking about mixing that with some Tim Holtz Alchemy fabrics. That would look rather fabulous. And then we do have a kit to make Catherine's solar system uh, wall hanging as well. And a bundle where you can save $14.99. So that's a great way of buying. Now then we're moving down to our clearance hour and you can see some Fab. Now, oh, just a second, go back, go back. I was looking at the Moda Balboa uh, quilt kit yesterday thinking, oh, shall I buy that? That's rather gorgeous. And look at all those lovely fabrics. And that's going to be in the clearance hour. I might just hang back. I might just hang back. But some lovely, some strip rolls, some jelly rolls, some thread collections, some little kits. Always good to have for betwixtmas. Um, now, this is 8am, so these aren't... It's a little bit round the wrong way, producer Hannah, but I like to keep me on my toes. I'm particularly keen on getting to the Dan Morris On Tap Beer Fabric Bundle. I can honestly say, decades of working in this industry, I have never seen a beer collection. <laughs> So I should be very excited to have a look at that. We'll be looking at that in just a moment. But do go and shop ahead, won't you, and get the things that you want, check out your baskets, and then you can sit back and just enjoy the morning with me and my lovely guest, Catherine Wright. Let's have a little wander over here. Come on. Let's have a look at all these gorgeous fabrics that we've got for this hour. Can we start with the Dan Morris beer fabrics? <laughs> How fabulous. <laughs> That's all right. I'm just making myself a little bit of space. <laughs> Can I also just say a quick thank you and a heartfelt thank you to my lovely friend Carrie, who made, I never know which side to point, made my beautiful um, crochet poppy for Remembrance Sunday. Thank you so much for that. I hope you're also wearing your poppies with pride. Um, we will, of course, be stopping at 11 o'clock to observe the National Two Minute Silence, and I hope you'll join with me in doing that. But right now, we've got fabulous bundles of fabric. Let's start with Dan Morris's beer collection on tap. I mean, come on, the lads. Look at this. Shall I move that over a little bit? Let's make a bit of space. So what we've got here is, now these are all available, um, are they indivi individual as well or? No, just as a bundle. Okay. You can find these individually on the website, of course, but in the show, these are a bundle, um, really fun beer inspired quilt. Let's have a little look at what we've got. So we've got the all over beer bottles. Um, I had never heard of sour beer but our producer got very excited about that. It's a thing and apparently it's gorgeous. No one else she knows likes it, but apparently it's lovely. That's a gorgeous green there. So we've got this coordinate. Be fun to just mix in with anything, I think, black and white. Um, this is a fun one. Look at these beer barrels. <laughs> I mean, really, you know, it just goes to show 
Yes, that could be a whiskey inspired quilt, I'm sure. Yes. Or if you wanted to make maybe gift bags for Christmas. I mean, actually, this would be very good, wouldn't it, for Christmas, I think, to make sort of specific gifts for the beer lover in your life. You could do a hamper, couldn't you, with, with beers, bottles of beers, craft beers, that kind of thing. That would be rather fun. Now, this, these two remind me a little bit of Tim Holtz, actually, because he's done a couple of fabrics that feature bottle tops. So that one appeals to me very much, as does this one here. Some great colours in there. Lovely colours. So, you know, I think that could quite easily be made into things like gift bags as well as, a, yes, of course, a quilt. It would be great as a lunch bag as well, <laughs> wouldn't it? You could definitely make a lunch bag out of that that just features beer products. And, of course, people have their own home bars too. You could make things like some bar mats, some um, coasters as well would be fun. A basket lining, maybe, something like that. All sorts. Oh, Delphine's watching us this morning. Morning, Delphine. We love you. Hope you're well. So this is the Dan Morris On Tap Beer Fabric Bundle. A lot of fun. I actually went to an Oktoberfest at York Racecourse a couple of weeks ago, which was quite a new experience. Well, I'd been to the beer keller in Birmingham many years ago when I was a student and I thought it was fun, but very much it was of its time. I was 19 or 20, you know. Um, but the idea of going to an Oktoberfest, yes, I wasn't quite sure. And certainly when we arrived, I thought, oh, I don't know if this is really going to be me. And then something happened. I think the lederhosen kicked in. And next thing I knew, my the whole party were standing on the benches with our beer steins, swinging back and forth and singing along with the songs. So actually it was quite a hoot. It was good fun. All right, so that is the um, beer on tap. And uh, Teresa says, those fabrics are fabulous. Cheers. Cheers to you. <laughs> I love it. Where should we go next? Oh, message on the bottom from Denise. Morning, Stuart. It's a bit of a dull day in Cornwall today, so a morning with you will be lovely. Love, Denise. Oh, thanks, Denise. Yeah, stay with me. Don't go outside. It's horrible out there. It's always nice and sunny in here. It could be any temperature outside when you're here. Yeah, let's go Tim Holtz Letters and Numbers. Now, you know I'm a big Tim Holtz fan. Um, these are fantastic fabrics. I like how we've got in this, it's a three half metre bundle for 23 pounds and seven pence. And what we've got there are letters and numbers. I like, we've got a light, a medium and a dark. So these would work really well together. You could definitely make something like a gorgeous messenger bag or satchel, rucksack, something like that would look awesome in these. Computer cover, yeah, or a laptop case. Rebecca Reed, actually, our Rebecca Reed collects fabrics with letters and numbers on, so these would be perfect for her. I'll just open them out a little bit so you can see a little bit more. Um, this is almost, this one is almost like um, the numbers on an, an American number plate, isn't it? This one, kind of full alphabets. Oh no, I don't know what those are. Some graph paper. I love this one. I'm going to open this one out a bit more fully. Again, these would be great for adding, um, you know, interesting neutrals. So if you wanted to mix these maybe with like the Tim Holtz Alchemy fabrics or um, actually, I mean, they would mix really well with all sorts of fabrics. I'm just going to grab um, something from a later bundle just to show you. I mean, they'd mix really nicely with your regular kind of more regular prints that we get on 
a lot of other quilting fabrics. Look at that combination. That to me works very well. That's very pleasing. Especially if that was pieced, you know, star block background or the other way around. That would look terrific. So don't be afraid to mix and match your genres and your designers. You know, you don't have to make a Kafe facet quilt or a Stuart Hillard quilt. Mm -hmm. hmm. Great stash builders, those. £23.07. Remember, you're getting three half metres there. So you're getting a lot of fabric. Perfect for a bag. And, well, you probably you'd make two bags out of that. That's letters and numbers from Tim Holtz. Great monochrome palette as well. Keep it monochrome or add a little pop of colour. Would look terrific. Now, next. The geometric one. Oh yeah, mid-century modern. Yep, uh, that's this one, isn't it? This is amazing. These are digital prints, aren't they? Mid-century modern. Absolutely amazing. These are from Henry Glass, a company I know and love very much. Oh, love that. Got a little bit of a 50s vibe, haven't they? That whole sort of space travel, 50s, 60s. That's amazing. These actually would work brilliantly with Catherine Wright's solar system panel. These have got that kind of look, haven't they? How's that for a neutral? Look at that one. I could definitely rock a shirt in that, but a half metre I don't think would quite do it. But you're getting three and a half metres here. So plenty to make a quilt with, especially if you throw in a neutral. That is gorgeous. I love that range of fabric. Look at this one here. <gasps> that is stunning. Absolutely beautiful. That is gorgeous. So that's mid-century modern from Henry Glass. You're getting three and a half metres of fabric in total, seven different fabrics, half a metre of each. They work brilliantly together. And these, you definitely, the alchemy from Tim Holtz would work beautifully. I'm a bit obsessed with that at the moment. Reva's got a question. Morning, are the bundles pre-cut or do you get continuous lengths if you multi-buy? These are all pre-cut bundles, Reva. Um, quite often we will do fabrics by the half metre. We'll always let you know if we do them. Everything in the show this morning is pre-cut. So um, what we show you is what you would get. And if you buy two of them, you'd get two separate bundles. For most applications, that doesn't hinder you too much, unless you want it for dressmaking, of course. Now, there are only eight of those mid-century modern bundles available, so do be quick. We won't be able to make any more. We're missing elements once these eight bundles have gone. So if you love that bundle from Henry Glass, do go for it. I think it's fab. Great colours. Yummy. And that main sort of almost prism print is just dazzling. Now, don't forget to check out. Yeah. So we've got a couple of these are beautiful sort of rainbow ombre fabrics. Um, now, this one that I've got here ends for two. Ooh, is this the right one? Right, let me just grab it back a second. So this is, I can't read that. It looks like hieroglyphics. <laughs> CFUL42, that's the whole, no. Okay, let me show you the fabric anyway. This is absolutely amazing. Look, I'm just gonna open that bit up. Look at that. So it's a pastel rainbow. That is absolutely incredible, isn't it? That's so lovely. Now you're getting four and a half meters of this fabric. It's really been bundled as something that would be suitable for a backing. You'd need to join it. You'd need to join it, but I mean, let me just show you and we're gonna, like that. You actually own the rainbow. I mean, it's literally, we're just gonna, 
show you. <laughs> wow, this is an incredible fabric, actually. Just come in a bit more. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. Now, there is four and a half metres of fabric. I'm just going to... We can't even get us both in screen. There's so much fabric here. That is really beautiful. That would be amazing for dressmaking. Imagine the sort of effects you could get depending on how you cut that fabric to create an absolutely beautiful sort of panel dress. That is gorgeous, but also would be terrific as a backing. Great for borders as well. It's really beautiful fabric. This is Lewis and Irene over the rainbow pastel fabric. Thank you, darling. Got to try and fold four and a half meters of fabric now. And although it's pastel, it is still vibrant and it's got a wonderful sheen to it. So just disappearing beneath fabric there. Wow. That's gorgeous. And it has almost like a sort of silky finish. It's very, very nice fabric. Lovely. Yeah, it has got a beautiful finish. Really soft and silky. Um, it would also be really nice. I'm just thinking ahead to next summer and maybe something like a windbreak because it is such a long piece of fabric that you could create a windbreak. Let's be realistic, folks. We live in Britain. It, it gets windy and cold, even on the beach. That is beautiful. Can we have a look at the other one? So this one is also from the same range. So this is also over the... Oh, now this is ticking every box. <laughs> wow, this is lovely. Oh, my goodness me. Wait till you see this. So this is Vibrant Rainbow, which you know I'm going to. Look at that. Look. Look at that. Oh, that is so beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. So vibrant. Really lovely. Don't worry about that white bit. That's a sticker <laughs> that we left on it. Yeah, right in the middle. And there's some hairs on that bit as well. Oh, my goodness. Does no one ever vacuum here? <laughs> but you're getting four and a half metres. Now, just the price alone for four and a half metres of fabric for fifty five ninety two, that is a very, very good price anyway. It's a very special fabric, this. Think about if you've got a big wedge ruler cutting big wedges and creating a massive mandala out of this. That would be incredible. It is really lovely, isn't it? It is beautiful, beautiful fabric. We should do like, you know, when you help your mum or dad to fold the sheets. Are you really useless at that? Yeah, just give it to me. I wish you could have seen producer Hannah's face then. It just collapsed at the... At the very thought that she might help fold the fabric. Although I'm rather wishing I hadn't said I'd fold this too. You know, it's a life skill, isn't it? Being able to fold. <laughs> it's one worth it. But I mean, I mean, how incredibly beautiful is that? Something just went on the floor. Some rings. Some curtain rings or something like that. Never mind. Wow. I said fold, folding's a life skill, which I have yet to acquire. There we go. You'll be grateful to know that I won't be folding the fabric that comes to you. But that is wonderful, isn't it? So inspiring. What would you make with that? Now, let's move on. What should we go to? Mmm, now I've got my eyes on this. I've got my eyes on this. Now, the bundle, if you have a look on the website, the photograph is actually just the panel, but um, this is a whole big bundle of fabrics. It's the Henry Glass Jacobean Joyeux Fabric Bundle. It's five metres in total, plus a panel, and, you get an, and, you, and you're also getting a half metre free within that. 
So ten half meters. Is that right? Ten half meters. One, two. Okay. Let me show you what you're getting. Oh gosh, this is lovely. This is lovely. Yeah. As I say, I've got my eye on this because so I love the sort of Jacobean look. There are only single figures, so I might have to just run out of the studio and order this. So there are our 10 different fabrics. They are so rich and beautiful, aren't they? Incredible. Absolutely incredible. I'm just going to grab this one out and just show you this design because it's lovely. I mean, Jacobean cruel work is very well known for these wonderful sort of swirling, extravagant flowers and foliage and buds and fruits often as well. How interesting. Hannah's just told me that the, um, the cruel work embroidery really sort of took off because of the advent of the steel hand sewing needle. Interesting. Mm, that is a nice little history link. You're getting some beautiful fabrics here. This is lovely. I mean, absolutely gorgeous for things like um, padded boxes, like a um, uh, hexa twee kind of uh, box or um, chatelaine, a sewing stool, recover your sewing box. These are absolutely delicious fabrics. That one's got a nice sort of bright white background, those two. You've got some really lovely coordinating fabrics, a couple of different greens. I mean, join those fabrics, two strips, a dark and a light, join them with a quarter inch seam and then cut out leaves so that you've got a light and a dark side. You know, put some fusible web on the back first of all and then cut out leaves, applique them, red berries. Hello, Christmas. A gorgeous gold as well, of course. That's a lovely coordinate. And then you've got these beautiful, swirling sort of Jacobean designs. And then let me show you the panel because this is really special. This is what is shown on the web but this is just part of the bundle. So this is, how gorgeous is that? I mean, I think that's just, it's just ready to be made into a table runner or a wall hanging, isn't it? With some piecing or not, or just add some borders. That is really, really gorgeous. Would you ever cut that up? I tell you what you could do actually, here's a thought, if I just turn that around, you could actually cut four stockings from this, four stocking fronts, and that would look lovely. If you think, I pull this over a tiny bit so you can see. Um, you know, think stocking top here, round, this kind of shape, so that you still got the birds on the stocking. Is that terrible to cut this up? That be awful? No, it would be good. You could also, as well, of course, you know, you could cut out blocks. And I'm thinking square blocks, rectangular blocks, along here, some borders. You could make a great cushion out of that, actually, if you think. Yeah, something like that, with a border around it, maybe some piping. Isn't that gorgeous? I absolutely love this. The colours are so rich. And I've got to admit, for me, Christmas is red, green, gold. Uh, always and forever. Although my Christmas tree is very much kind of uh, amber and rusts and chocolate browns and gold. Um, but really, for me, Christmas generally is red, green and gold. So that appeals to me very much. Beautiful, beautiful range. There are single figures. So if you're loving that as much as I do, go on, take the last one. I'll be fine. <laughs> We've got some other little bundles of that, haven't we? Let's have a look. Should we start with the red one? 
So this is a bundle of just the red fabrics from the uh, Jacobean Joya range. And here you've got four fabrics, so two metres in total. Uh, these are your four fabrics that you've got. So you've got that all over Jacobean design. These are all available in the big bundle, of course. You're getting these if you buy the big bundle. But you might just like the reds. Um, and so this is what you're getting. This is wonderfully multi-tonal reds, but also a bit of orange in there just to give it some highlights. Uh, this one here, it's got a bit of a William Morris feel to it, I think. I don't know why it makes me think of Strawberry Thief. But it's not like that really, but just a bit of a connection. And that's gorgeous too, isn't it? I suppose it's that influence from world textiles. A lot of the Jacobean cruel work, a lot of William Morris work was from hand-blocked Indian fabrics and hand-embroidered Indian textiles. So you can kind of see that influence, can't you? I think those are absolutely smashing. Very rich, very regal. This would be a brilliant, actually, collection to use for your Christmas table. So think about that runner. Maybe, have you seen those wonderful candle surrounds? So you have the square of fabric, bosal, fabric on the back, and you sew around and turn it through. So, And then you've got maybe 12 of those squares, and then you sew them together to create almost like a crown that you can stand a candle in the middle. Yes, very beautiful. These would be perfect for that. Absolutely perfect. I'd always use an electric candle in one of those, of course. <laughs> those are lovely. Placemats, napkins as well, of course. This is the most popular bundle so far. It would also mix really well if you've got a little bit of something gold, maybe a little bit of gold piping, gold lurex. Or if you like doing stained glass patchwork, you can get um, pre-fused gold bias tape. That would work really nicely. Simple patchwork, even just a nine patch, say, and then cover your seams with that gold fusible bias tape and stitch it down. That would be amazing. Okay, so that's our red bundle. We've also got this lovely gold. Now this I think is very lovely. This is a one meter bundle, so you're getting two half meters. This would make absolutely beautiful Christmas stockings or a mantle cover. I made a mantle cover for home a few years ago um, so a mantle cover, if you've not seen it, I mean, have a look on my on my Instagram, you'll see one, you have to scroll through. The one I made looks like it's got Dolly Parton on it. It's an angel, but when I was doing the sort of embroidery and sort of colouring and all that kind of thing, I kind of made it look like Dolly. Um, <laughs> channeling Ms. Parton. But how beautiful is this combo? So I'm thinking main stocking and cuff uh, or the other way around would look gorgeous. Some Christmas cushions just to sort of, you know, festive up. I mean, actually, there's no reason why this has to be Christmas. It may fit into your decor all year round. It does appeal to me on many, many levels. I think I mean, often like my Christmas range this year, Scandi Christmas, my uh, Christmas fabric range, isn't doesn't scream Christmas. Um, and I like that because, you know, um, although I like the, the things that I've made that just come out for Christmas Eve until New Year, I do like some things that I can keep out for longer. And I think this definitely could. Mm. Because, you know, when you do take down your Christmas decorations, your house seems twice the size which is lovely, but it can seem a bit bare, can't it? And a bit sort of suddenly lacking in colour. So that's a lovely half metre bundle. We've one more half metre bundle in the Jacobean range. And this is the sort of lightest, this is the white background. So this is very sort of still regal, but fresh. So you've got the white background with the gorgeous Jacobean 
um, floral there. And then, boom, this beautiful, and there is a sort of a style of embroidery, isn't there, where you sort of, Jacobean embroidery, where you divide it up into squares and do little motifs. Think how amazing these would look for covered buttons. Can you imagine a covered button that just featured the little flower? That would be nice on the back of a cushion. This would make beautiful cushions, actually. And again, something I think you could keep out all year round. Thirteen ninety nine for two half metres of very special fabric. And I, I'll be honest with you, I've not seen this anywhere else. Henry Glass fabrics, in fact, are very widely available in the States. Not so much in this country. I'm thrilled to bits that Sewing Street do Henry Glass fabrics because I love them. Right. Now we've got a nice bundle of solids that would work very well. So we've handpicked these to go with the Henry Glass Joyeux range. There are regular solids, so they're Rose and Hubble. And we've got that gorgeous gold. We've got a Christmas green. This would work just on its own, actually. You don't have to combine it. We've got a cream. And then we've got that really bright Christmas red. So those would work very nicely on their own too, but they would also work as accent colours, linings, backings for uh, the Joyeux range as well. £12.99 is a brilliant price for two metres of solid fabric. Like that. Love that gold. Isn't that beautiful? <coughs> Really lovely. We've also, do you mind if we go to the um, gold batiks? I'll tell you why. Were you thinking the same? Because I think they go really nicely. I'd put them with the Jacobean fabrics. These are Moda batiks, and these I think would work so beautifully with the Jacobean Joyeux range as well. Um, let me just. If I just grab down the reds for a second, I'm just going to fan them out because I just want to show you how beautifully these would work together. So there's the Jacobean Joyeux range and then these are our Moda Batiks. I mean, look at that. These work. And these have actually got a snowflake. I mean, how lovely together do they go? So I'll move these out of the way now so as not to confuse you. So these are our Moda gold batiks and they are absolutely stunning, aren't they? These would work absolutely beautifully just on their own. You could mix these in with, say, just something like a cream. So that would work really nicely. So if you wanted, if your theme for Christmas is just gold or golden ivory that's classy that's really beautifully classy um but equally if you're still in kind of autumn mood and you want some nice autumny fabrics we've also got some lovely autumn fabrics coming up and look how nicely all of those go together now, I've been around for long enough to have seen batiks come in and out and in and out and in. And, you know, often what's said about batiks is if you're going to use batik, you can only use batiks in a quilt. The whole thing has to be batiks. It absolutely does not. I've made many quilts, many quilts, where I've put batiks in with things like K-facet fabrics. Beautiful. Um, antique reproduction fabrics and batiks work so well together. They work beautifully because the batiks got a kind of more subtle, shaded and sometimes antique look. I mean, something like that would work absolutely brilliantly with something that was quite, um, you know, vintage looking or, or reproduction would fit right in. At the end of the day, they are 100% cotton fabrics. Uh, beautiful, beautiful range, this. And these have got a Christmassy feel to them. 
Well, there you see, look, it's uh, kind of Christmas decorations, but then cut up, you would lose that. Um, well, mostly probably you would lose that. And so you could use this in any quilt, any time of year. I'm going to dare to say that even, is that mad? Beard and, beer and baubles. That's the theme of my Christmas. <laughs> Absolutely. Come for a good night out at mine. It's beer and baubles night. And what's super about these boutiques as well is you've got a really gorgeous range of golds in there. So the golds aren't all the same. You've got kind of caramels and antique gold and more of a, almost like a tea dye effect as well but they all work beautifully together or apart and really do look lovely with the Jacobean Joyeux. And also, as it turns out, Dan Morris on tap beer fabrics, we think. <laughs> now then, let's have a look. I'm still very much in autumn mode. And you know, as I was explaining earlier on to Hannah, Autumn's proved so popular, they're having it every year. So, <laughs> this is a really, really beautiful bundle from Riley Blake. It's called Adele in Autumn. Um, let me just show you, there's so many lovely, that's a gorgeous floral there. Warm, rich, earthy, antique tones. Let me just open this out so you can see this floral. That is stunning, isn't it? Absolutely stunning. I wish we had that by the half metre for dressmaking. You might be able to find that, actually, if you search for Riley Blake, because I just think that would make the most amazing tea dress. Um, but a whole range of rich, autumny colours. Comes in an olive green. There's a lovely cream there as well. And then... Just have a look at this. This is so stunning. This is like a patchwork cheetah cloth. You could cut it up, you could make it into blocks, but you could just layer it and quilt it or put a border around it. Or fussy cut these motifs and applique them onto a background. And um, if you quilted around each of the segments, you could pass it off as paste. It's the kind of thing I'd do. Oh, no, it's cheeky, isn't it? So that's the Riley Blake Adele in Autumn bundle. Really stunning. I love the range of colours that we've got in this bun uh, range of uh, bundles today. Uh, there really is something for everyone. Yeah, that is lovely. Bit of everything. Beautiful. So that's Adele in Autumn. Now, Tim Holtz Christmas, this is a little bundle we've put together. If you always associate Tim Holtz with kind of grunge and um, sort of steampunk, this might come as a little bit of a surprise. Tim's done a Christmas range, and this is just one fabric from it that we've teamed with a solid. But isn't that gorgeous? If you've never worked with Tim Holtz fabrics before, or you don't necessarily like that grungy style. This is quite different, isn't it? It's still got a lovely painterly effect to it. The greens in there are just glowy, aren't they? And then we've teamed that with this moss, like a dark moss. I think that's lovely. You could also um, uh, add a little extra pop of red in there, would be lovely. The background is a sort of black and charcoal mix, so even the background isn't one solid colour. And with your two half metres, what could we do? Well, definitely I'm thinking things like table decor would look super. Stockings would look great, of course. You could make a rather sophisticated gift sack as well. Drawstring bag, you know, that would look lovely. Mug hugs would be fun, yeah, absolutely. Hot water bottle covers we were talking about yesterday, that would be rather cosy. 
It would also make a very, very nice lining for um, a basket perhaps that you have on the table so that might contain things like your mince pies or bread rolls, something like that, bread basket. It's really lovely and festive, isn't it? Good old Tim, eh? You clever boy. He's a very, very clever designer. Love his work. Now, let's have a look at, where is, there we go. Now, this is very traditional, uh, cosy. It's a favourite of yours, I know. This is Lewis and Irene Highland Cow. Now, this bundle's got three half metres. Uh, you've got that lovely all over kind of Scottish castle and the thistles and scrubby grass. And then the Highland cow is having a fine old time munching away, as they do. Love that there's a little uh, calf there as well. You know, the surprising thing about Highland cows is how small they are. They're not a big breed at all. I was quite surprised at this because I, I had seen them from afar. But in the late summer, we went to a farming, you know, country fair, but it was very, very farming orientated. And they'd got loads of Highland cows there and they were literally only sort of this kind of height. Whereas I'm used to cows that are this sort of... We did think actually about getting Highland cows for the farm. Um, the, the, the biggest challenge with cows is because even Highland cows are massive animals and, and pack a considerable amount of weight. So handling them, you need all specialist equipment, you need tractors and stuff like that. And we're quite low tech on the farm. We are quite low tech. I like scattering the corn and, you know, and picking up baby goats. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, but those would be super. And again, if you have a bit more of a kind of Highland theme, if you've maybe made Delphine Brooks Highland cow cushion or wall hanging, these would fit in really, really well with that sort of theme, little bit sort of Highland, throw in a few plaids or tartans. And they're nice sort of soft muted heathery colours, aren't they? Charlie would like this. Charlie likes heathery colours and he loves Highland cows. Morning, by the way, darling, if you're watching. I have... <laughs> I've, I've, left my, I've left my order for Sunday lunch. It's wonderful, you know, whenever I work a Sunday, Charlie always makes Sunday lunch. And um, today I've completely turned it on its head by asking for salmon en croute. And then for pudding, it's Mary Berry's ginger parkin with custard. I'm a very, very lucky boy, and I know it. Mm. Oh, let's do a little bit of Alice Caroline. Mm. Now, we've got some five-inch squares. Now, Alice Caroline, uh, we know we're doing her block of the month at the moment, aren't we? Her Dresden. But we love her little collections from Liberty. I think these have only been on once before. I'm going to open the packet so you can have a proper look. You're getting 25 inch squares and these are all Liberty fabrics. Been ever so popular these. They're a lawn weight. And these are, now everyone gets the same squares, right? Am I right? So they're not, they don't vary. They, they, these are the ones you will get. Okay. So they are beautiful. Wow, look at that one. They're so detailed. And if you absolutely love Liberty, or if you're collecting Liberty fabrics to create an all Liberty quilt, that would be lovely. Lawn is gorgeous to work with, actually, for quilting, because the quilt that you end up with is dreamy soft and so light. Now, I'd actually recommend if you're using lawn, all lawn, to make a quilt, that you invest in a silk batting. Silk batting, yeah. I used, I've only ever used a silk batting once. Now, I'm going to warn you, it does have a little bit of a funny smell, 
silk batting. Um, it, it, of course, it can be, you know, cleaned and, and that, you know, I think once it comes out of the packet, the smell dissipates. But um, yeah, it was something I noticed. It just had a little bit of a, a finished smell. But it's amazing to work with. And now the reason why you would use that is because silk batting is also feather light. It is so light, dreamy. Um, it doesn't have the kind of heavy weight that a cotton batting has. Even a thin cotton batting has a certain weight to it, whereas a silk batting is just gossamer light. It is dreamy. I mean, try it. Try it. <laughs> I've folded these as carefully as I possibly can. Do you think they're going to go back in the packet? <sighs> Place your bets. Place your bets. Who knows? But that's the Alice Caroline. 20 different prints, 5 inch squares, and they are all Liberty Fabrics. I've probably put that round the wrong way, haven't it? But anyway, there we go. Now we also do the two and a half inch squares. Now these you've got 36 squares. Can I open these as well? These would go together in a six by six grid. So you could make a little, little cushion front, especially if you popped a board around it, that would be cute. So those are the squares. They must be die cut, mustn't they? Two and a half inch Liberty fabric squares, 36 pieces. There you can see a little suggestion there. You could sew them together to make a cushion. But a real assortment of different prints. And it looks like you've got like some repeats. So, which is a good thing. You could use that to sort of, you know, spread the designs out, get nice balance. And those are 9.99. If you've ever been to the Liberty Store in London, it's just iconic, isn't it? Sort of Tudor revival. And there's a, a flower shop just to the side. So the, the front of Liberty is always completely full of fresh flowers. Amazing. So much fun to visit. I love going to Liberty. I always get exhausted by the stairs, though. Now then. We're going to go to a break now, but don't forget that 10 of you are going to win your entire basket for free today. So this is not a day to hold back. Can you imagine if you'd only bought a reel of thread and then you won your basket for free? Um, gosh. So 10 of you, we've already announced the winners from yesterday, lucky people. I can't wait to find out what you had in your basket and what you've won, um, but I hope it was something amazing. Uh, we're going to go to a break now and then when we come back we'll be with our wonderful Catherine Wright and uh, the first of her two visits today so don't go away. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Hi everyone, I'm Yvonne McAtamney. I'm a patchwork and quilter. And what do I do the rest of the time? The rest of the time, I actually own and try and manage village fabrics in the town of Wallingford. How did I start my sewing and journey? Well, I've been sewing since as long as I can remember. I started out dressmaking with uh, my mum and my big sisters. And since then, I've tried my hand at most things and have finally ended up with patchwork and quilting. And I think that's probably due to one of Elner Burns Quilt in a Day books. Let me assure you, you don't make a quilt in a day. 
but it's been a passion of mine for the last 25 years and I'm still at it so there's hope for us all. So what do I enjoy sewing? Well, I like to do a bit of most things to be honest, but my favourite thing is anything to do with my Japanese fabrics. So as you can see, we've moved to a different part of the shop and here we are in another of my favourite corners. And I really enjoy combining the lovely Japanese fabrics with some hand stitching and um, hand quilting. So I've moved to the permanent Christmas room at my shop here. And as you hopefully can tell, this is quite a large shop here. So most of my time is uh, involved in keeping this running successfully. So I don't really have a lot of time for claims to fame. So what I suppose I could say um, is that my claim to fame is actually managing to manage John Scott. Um, I'm sure he'll take that the way it's meant. So um, love you lots, John. My top tip is that children's colouring in books are a really valuable resource whenever you're crafting. You've got nice clear outlines that can become templates for your applique work or you can transfer them and use them as quilting patterns. I can't draw but I can create lots of things using bits and pieces from things like children's colouring in books. Give it a try. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Hi everybody, morning friends, it's Stuart Hillard here and you're on Sewing Street. Uh, it's great to have your company today on uh, this very special Remembrance Sunday. Uh, we've got a wonderful hour now with the gorgeous Catherine Wright, who's here with a brilliant, brilliant new design from Kay Facet. Uh, terrific fabrics in this kit, I know you're going to love it. It's called the Ancient Glade Quilt Kit. Uh, there's already lots of these in baskets. It's an absolute tour de force of all the greens. I, I think that's what's key about Cave's quilts, isn't it? If he does green, it is all the greens and it's such a study in using color effectively. But look at those gorgeous bright pops of pinks and reds and purples in there as well that just bring the whole thing to life. Now, let me show you what you're getting. It's a gorgeous quilt and it's a big quilt too. 
Um, Size-wise, it's 207 centimetres by 174 centimetres. Hannah, you know what I'm going to say. What's that in inches, please? It's always you. Now, inside your kit, you're getting the different fabrics that you need to make the kit. There has been one substitution, uh, just one, which I'm going to show you because it's important to know exactly what you're getting. Uh, the kits come beautifully packaged as well. You get this very classy sleeve on the outside. That quilt, by the way, 68 inches by 81, so a really good size for a single or a double bed. It would top a double bed beautifully. And then inside the box, you're getting all those wonderful fabrics wrapped in tissue. It's just slide everything out. And then the fabric's all beribboned and bejeweled in there. Now, this is the substitution. So it's this fabric right here has been substituted. I rather prefer this fabric, if I'm being perfectly honest, because it has a little bit more sort of vibrancy. Um, I wonder, could we just have a little look at the quilt and I'll just show you which fabric has been taken out and which has been substituted. So the one that looks a bit like malachite, it's the fourth row out from the centre, um, the sort of blacks and greens. Do you see the one I mean? That's been substituted, so that fabric isn't in the kit. This one that features rather more vibrant sort of parrot greens and blues and purples, feathers, this one's been put in its place. So I actually like that substitution, but all the other fabrics are exactly as you see them in the quilt. And they're exactly what you need. Uh, in fact, in fact, Catherine and I were discussing before, as we were hanging the quilt that if you wanted to you could use your bits and bobs that are left over to make a scrappy binding. Uh, the only thing you need to, to add for this, you obviously need a batting, quilt batting, we'll look at those in a sec. Uh, you need your backing fabric as well, we've got bundles and the kit doesn't include fabric for the binding but as Catherine and I said you could make a scrappy binding out of what is left and that would look amazing. Let's have a little look and see what fabrics we're actually getting in the kit. You're getting full instructions too, um, but also Catherine is going to show us how to put the quilt together as well and the skills that you'll need. It's a nice beginner friendly quilt though, isn't it Catherine? Absolutely. I even like the ribbon. There's Catherine. <laughs> Hello you. Hello. How are you? Good morning. Oh, I'm good. good. Morning. I've had my two cups of coffee. I've woken up now. Oh, bless you. <laughs> it is an early start, it's isn't it? It's just very dark at the moment, isn't it? No, so dark. No. It doesn't lend itself to early mornings, really. <laughs> let's be honest. So let's have a look at the gorgeous fabrics you're getting. You're getting that wonderful feather print. How vibrant and gorgeous is that? Um, you'll use this for the very centre of your quilt. This is one of Cave's enduring classics, the chrysanthemums. It's actually um, Philip Jacobs, but he's part of the Cave Facet Collective. Now this is an interesting addition, um, and we were all saying we haven't seen this fabric before, but it's another Cave Collective. How incredible is that? Now if, be honest, if you were putting together a green quilt, would you instantly go to this fabric? I wouldn't. I wouldn't have grabbed that fabric. But this is what Kaif does. Can you see where it is in the kit, in the quilt and how important it is to how that quilt works? And this is why using one of his kits is such a clever idea sometimes. It really challenges your our perceptions of what should go into a green quilt. And then the next time you make a quilt that's blue, do you know what I mean, Catherine? Yeah, totally. The sort of thing. Oh, and I'm learning these things all the time. Uh, this is another classic cave. This is, um, I always want to call this paperweight, but I think it might be called Venetian glass. Let me just, Roman glass, there we go, Roman glass. But it reminds me of those paperweights that you find sometimes that are made of the little, they have the little floral glass nuggets in them. Now this is a cool fabric. These are, I thought at first these were um, anemones, but they're actually watermelons. And again, you know, this is how Cave pushes the boundaries 
in quilt making because again these are not always necessarily fabrics you would say okay I'm making a green green quilt I need this fabric and yet when you look at the quilt they bring in those other tones those lavender and lilac and grey blue tones that just bring the whole thing to life now this one I would definitely go for now you're going to use this both in the piecing and also in the border this is amazing isn't it it's some way between an animal print, an abstract animal print, and Aboriginal art, and, and fashion, and it's a really cool print that, isn't it? It's actually called Animal. See, I wasn't being daft, said it was like an animal, animal print. Sometimes I think I say these things and I think, where's that coming from? <laughs> and again this one not a fabric that I would instantly think that would go with a green quilt and yet when you look at the quilt it's used in the border it's the outer border and it brings all of those colors to life there it is in the outside it brings a, a blast of light doesn't it it's like there's a light shining on that border that just brightens the whole thing. Yep, we do like that, don't we? Uh, five of you already checked out with your quilt kits. Well done. You've got your ancient glades quilt coming to you. Now I know this is called Roman glass. This is a different green. That's gorgeous. Isn't that lovely? Some people make these sorts of things out of like FIMO, don't they? You know that heat yeah. that you put it in the oven? My friend Maxine used to do all sorts of incredible things with FIMO. Ooh, doorknobs, doorknobs from FIMO. You really can't make anything. She made a mini me, <laughs> but it was about nine inches tall. Oh, sweet. And it was when I was a step teacher. And so she made me in a unitard, <laughs> stepping onto a Reebok step. It was cute. I don't still have it, I don't think. I, I wish I did. It wasn't terrifying. It was absolutely lovely and very cute. Oh, I see. Hannah's saying that the thought of me in a unitard is terrifying. <laughs> it wasn't terrifying at the time. It would be now if I crammed my body into a, a unitard now. Um, and then of course you're getting your instructions. Now, just to say, um, there is, I mean, it's not, I don't think of it really as a pattern correction. It's just to say, this fabric's been taken out, this fabric's been put in its place. It happens from time to time. Some fabrics have a season and then they're gone. So, but still an absolutely beautiful you can see there's the position of the fabric that's been substituted now we do do split pay on this quilt kit for 69.99 two payments of that but keep in mind of course that 10 of you are going to win your basket completely free so you know that might be you and then you could get the whole Kit, if you'd picked split pays and then you won your shopping basket, we'd have to, yeah, we'd have to, I'm sure you'd still get the whole thing. Did you say we've had an email? We've had a nice email. From Lynn. Ah, Lynn's emailed in. She was a lucky winner from yesterday. <coughs> Stitch markers. Small order. Oh, but still delighted to have won it as a gift. Oh, Lynn. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, well, well done, Lynn. Congratulations. So that's our Ancient Glade quilt kit. It's $139.99. You can have split pays if you like. Um, shall we go and meet with Catherine? Yeah, let's meet Catherine. Catherine. Hello, Stuart. Again. Again. <laughs> I'm just standing here thinking of you being a step teacher. Yeah. When was that then? 22 years. Where? Uh, no, when. When? 22, yeah. <laughs> when it was well, all the rage. Yeah, I mean, I, I 
trained as a step teacher in 1992. Right. And step was first introduced in the UK in about 91. So right. it was about a year old. I was one of the first people who trained and taught it. And I taught in Birmingham. And um, at the time, it was very much you step on, you step off, yeah. you do repeaters, you do leg curls, and that was about it. But we all thought it was amazing and incredible and so revolutionary. After about 18 months, I was so bored of it. <laughs> and I thought, if I don't change how I do this, I'm, you know, I'm going to have to give it up. Yeah. So I started teaching much more exciting and interesting choreography. And then 20 years later, I was still loving it. Cool. Um, and it was my absolute favourite thing to teach. Yeah. I loved step and I did all kinds of variations. Power step and step aqua. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So steps that were submerged in the pool. <laughs> I did Zumba Aqua and oh yeah, I did all sorts. Fantastic. I was an exercise teacher yeah, for many, many years. Loved it. Wow. I always used to think that I would train in Pilates as my sort of retirement plan. Yes. But then I'm doing something completely different. You are. Which is much nicer. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. But I could definitely still do a step class here if you really wanted me to. Are we prepared? We you could. Do step? Yeah. You do step? I have in the past. Yeah. I'm not a big one for exercise, to be honest. No. No. <laughs> I love the fact that it's with music because I love music. Yeah, well, I like dancing, so yeah, yeah. yeah, it would be okay. Yeah. Next time, okay? My exercise classes were always like going to a party. Oh, that's all right. So, then. yeah, it was yeah. always about having fun and letting loose and being free and easy and being creative. It was just an extension of, of being creative, you know, hmm. move how you want to move. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> love it. Anyway, Brilliant. let's right. talk ancient glaze. Yes. Oh, well, I love it when they give me a cape quilt. I do. He's my favourite. I just love the colours. It's all about colour, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's incredible. That's, that's what it is. OK, so it's entirely made up of half square triangles. Hurrah! So it's super easy. And I do really like half square triangles because they are so versatile, mm. aren't they? Mm. You can just do so many patterns with them. And they're not that difficult either. So No, although, of course, you know, it's one of those basic units that you you got to get right this to get true. nice sharp points and this everything is fitting true. so there are obviously different ways to make half square triangles this particular quilt makes them from triangles that you piece together rather than squares that you piece and then cut um, i was just going to show you how to cut them very beautifully because the thing with this kind this sort of Patrick, is it's all about accuracy. And half yeah. square triangles, it's all about accuracy, isn't it? It is. You've got to cut it accurately, you've got to piece it accurately, and then you'll get your points nice and everything will go together and you'll feel happy. At the same time, I always think that you shouldn't get too hung up about it. No, about absolutely. every tiny millimetre, if it's not, I mean, of course, it's brilliant when it goes together and it's perfect and yeah. you feel so happy, but at the same time, you shouldn't get so hung up that it becomes a chore. No, and I think as well, you know, if we if we look at the quilt that's hanging behind you, I mean, I've studied it meticulously and it is beautifully pieced. But would you know? Would you really know when you look at it? Would you enjoy that quilt any less if some of those per points were a bit chopped off exactly. and a bit wonky? Would you love it less? I don't think you no, would. No, you wouldn't. Yeah. You wouldn't. Yeah. So, um, so and they're also nice big half square triangles. They're as very well. nice big half square triangles. But every tri every square, so we cut you cut strips across the width of your fabrics. It's important you do it across the width of your fabric so that you get the right number out, um, because obviously there's the right quantity in the box, and you can't afford to cut it wrongly. No, always no. read the instructions so from start to absolutely. finish. Absolutely. So our squares that we're cutting. So this is what a strip that I've already cut one from. Our squares that we're cutting a seven and three eighths of an inch. Mm -hmm. And people can get a bit confused when they start getting on the eighths. eighths. <laughs> so I'm just going to trim up my edge so I know that that's nice and straight. Make sure you're always going away from yourself with your rotary cutter. This width. Keep in mind with your rulers, they always, I mean, not well, check that your ruler has got eighths marks. Yes. Creative grids do. Um, and and if you're not sure, I mean, most of us, if we're making half square triangles, it tends to be the seven eighths, doesn't it? Four and seven eighths or three and seven eighths. This is still a 
seven eighths. It's just it's obviously a three and a half inch finish, isn't it? Yeah. So you've got four and three eighths. Yes. So I've already gone that way is already my width is already seven and three eighths. So do you know what I always count like this? One, two, three, four, five, six, because then I know I've absolutely done it. Seven, mm -hmm. one, two, three. And line up both edges. Okay. When you're cutting with your razor cutter, and I, and I do find in my classes that ladies often find it quite difficult cutting with their razor cutters, you have to put more pressure on than you think, I mm. think, when you're starting out. Mm. So, you know, press down, put your weight into your ruler. And if you can do it at a table this kind of height, yeah. if you've got a kitchen island or a raised, it is better than if you're sort of bending over a normal table. That's a really good tip. So your weight into it, let me just make sure it's not moved. And then one nice. And I think as well, yeah. just show your hand position as well on the rotary cutter, because what a lot of people don't do is where you've got the ripples on the top, you put your index finger on the top like that, didn't you, when you cut? And that's what it's there for. A lot of people just grip the handle and push. Yeah. And actually having your finger on the top there does give you more pressure where you need it. Yeah. The other thing to remember, I mean, I did one nice, I've only got one layer here, so I did one nice one through and, and it cut it. Obviously start with a nice sharp blade, especially mm. if you're starting a new quilt like this with gorgeous fabric, start with your nice sharp blade. If you don't get through the first time, don't saw at it, because no. you'll get all sorts of like fray bits and then it, if you do need to go through again, don't move anything, another nice stroke away from you. Yeah is the way to go. Um, all our squares that we cut are then going to be cut down the diagonal. I'm using my, there are lots of lots of lines on to line yes. up. This one's the nearest, so this is the one I'm using to line up my points. So I know that's straight. Is that like a little sort of extra insurance policy when you put your ruler on? Yeah. So you can line everything up like that. Yeah, I always use my mat probably more than my ruler mm, okay. as the thing to measure with and the rulers because you've got lines on your ruler as well to help you measure haven't you, do. you? and you line do. up but I tend to use my mat more. Uh, Carol says good morning all good morning to you Carol. Uh, Jill says I do aqua zumba every week love it show me your Beto 7. <laughs> Oh, we're getting technical Hi, now. Just messaging. Oh, Stuart, I think you should do a step video for YouTube. That would encourage me to exercise then. Heidi and Skipton. Oh, Heidi, what an idea. <laughs> Only if you're wearing the unitard. Of course. <laughs> do you know I don't own a unitard anymore? Oh. I had every colour you can imagine, including one that was fluorescent we could have a demo yellow. On it. Stop it. No, we couldn't. No, we couldn't. <laughs> you just crack on with your half square triangles, Catherine. <laughs> so, um, now the thing you find with triangles is that you have now cut this down the bias and it can stretch. Can you see how that can stretch like that? And you've got to be a little bit careful. So I would recommend um, best press or spray starching mm. your half square triangles before you start piecing them together. So would you spray them now or before you cut them out? Um, well, when I cut them all, I cut a load and I then did them all. Got you. But that was mainly space. Got you. I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rather than, and also because I wasn't using, I suppose at the square point would be yeah. a good point, wouldn't it? Um, rather than your whole bit of fabric. But and should people be concerned about piecing half square triangles from triangles? Because I know a lot of us will make cut the square, and we'll mark the diagonal, so either yes. side. You could, you could with this if you really wanted to, and you've got the time and the energy. Because you've got such a fantastic layout grid here on your instructions, you could work out your pairs and do it from the squares. So, and do it the way where you have your squares together, you mark them, you sew either side and then cut it. Mm -hmm. You don't need to change the sizing, it will still work. So you could work that out, but obviously for this I'm doing it how it actually tells you to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, the, and the reason why, why it's been done like that is that you've got such a mixture. Quite often when we're making half square triangles, it's, you know, assorted reds and the same white background, isn't it? And you do lots of all at once. Yeah, absolutely. Whereas with this, you know, you need a few of these combination, a few of those. And it's actually easier just to cut them out as triangles and then piece them together. The, That's you know, right. What you actually need. Now, I haven't done it on this one, but usually when I'm doing this, because you because your little charts in here and your things on here, I actually normally take a little scrap 
and put it down here so I don't have to keep flicking all Sounds the time. Good idea. Mm. Um, so you can reference. Um, I've already put together, and you can see here, that central, lovely chrysanthemum. That is a gorgeous centre, oh, isn't it? It is just lovely. Just let you know as well, if you want to get yourself some best press um, details, were on screen. <laughs> They're coming back. Have they disappeared. There they are, Mary Ellen's Best Press, scent free, uh, 499 milliliter bottle for 11.99. It's a favourite here at Sewing Street. We love our Best Press. I've been using Best Press for around nearly 10 years and I do love it. It's great just for adding some extra body and also making sure that your fabric is crease free before you start cutting into it. You know, that's something that will really help you to get more accurate piecing if your fabric is wrinkle free and perfectly flat before you start cutting it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, to make our half square triangles, we are literally going to piece down the centre of our triangles. So it's a, half, it's a quarter inch square, on a uh, quarter inch seam on everything. So if you've got two fabrics layered there together? I have got two laid there together. So I'm going in, I, I'm, I'm not doing this in the right order. Normally you do it row by row. Cut everything, get your nice piles of fabric row by row. I just thought if I started up here, you wouldn't see the pattern. Mm. So I thought I'll show you a bit in the middle so you can start to see the pattern coming. Yeah. So that's why I've kind of started randomly <laughs> in the centre. But you wouldn't really do that if you were doing the whole thing you'd get all your fabrics and just go row by row. Just tick them off. Tick them off as you yeah. go, absolutely. So I'm on fabrics B and C to then make this next round. So I've got the nice uh, green Roman glass mm -hmm. with my watermelons. Not a combination I ever <laughs> thought I'd hear you saying, <laughs> but there you are. <laughs> so I'm very carefully going to match them up. I think I will put... A, Put a little pin in just to hold them. Very good. <laughs> I think pinning is your personal choice, isn't it? When I'm at home and I'm being fast, I don't tend to pin anything. But I think if you're, especially if you're fairly new to it, yeah. a pin just hold, helps. And the it bigger really the unit, the bigger the block, uh, I would pin. Yes. Because those are going to finish at six and a half inches. I don't know what I was saying earlier on, but seven and three eighths will finish at six and a half inch finished unit once it's sewn into the quilt. So I've got the quarter inch foot on the machine. Mm. I've put the stitch down a bit smaller. I've got it down to two actually. And we're just keeping those edges together. And just be very careful that you don't pull them or push them to stretch them that you just let the machine take it through so that it doesn't stretch out of line. Yeah, just keep it all nice and flat. And I do think a quarter inch foot revolutionises your quilting, don't you? Oh, your patchwork, mm. because it just makes you so much more accurate. Yeah, it does. It gives you a guide to sort of work against, if you, especially if you've got a foot that's got one of those guides. I would still always recommend when you've sewn a few patches, measuring them just to make sure, because, because there's a variation in, well, is your fabric right against the guard? Is it poking out of the guard? Has your guard bent outwards? Because they can bend, some of them can be quite sort of thin um, and flexible. So do always check your seam allowance from time to time just to make sure it's nice and accurate. Now, lots of you are checking out your K-Facet Ancient Glade quilt kit you've got over six and a half meters of fabric in there all from k facet absolutely beautiful array of fabrics beautifully put together by k facet um, in one of his quilt designs now remember you could also be one of the lucky 10 who get their shopping basket completely free 10 of you today will be picked like 10 shoppers were picked yesterday at random to win your shopping basket and you will win everything that's in it whether it's a packet of stitch markers a quilt kit or a brand new sewing machine so 
shop and enjoy yourself today and you know 10 of you will get your shopping basket for free we always think don't we Catherine it won't be me it won't be me I won't win well I'm just standing here thinking maybe I should go and do a little shopping <laughs> absolutely I think you probably should <laughs> Um, but you know, you could be winning your ancient glade quilt kit for nothing, getting it absolutely oh, free. Oh, that would be so amazing, wouldn't it? Just to, I love free. I love a freebie. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, while you're at it and you're buying your ancient glade quilt kit, maybe you're going to buy the quilt batting to go inside. Maybe you're going to buy the backing fabric as well. You will win your whole basket. Wow, so it's great, yeah. great offer. So I'm pressing them very open, very carefully, again, endeavouring not to What's your stretch. preference in terms of where you press your seam allowance, Catherine? I am pressing towards the dark side. Nice. <laughs> it's what I tend to do. Now, if you're approaching it row by row, ideally, you will have made your squares. You'll have got them all laid out. It says in the instructions, put them on your design wall. I haven't got a design wall, I don't know about you, mm. but I'll have it all out, out on my lounge floor, mm -hmm. my floor mm -hmm. wall. Yep. And <laughs> yes, the design wall, also known as a living room. <laughs> yeah. It's getting it's a lot less easy now I've got a dog though, because she wants to help. Oh, of course mm, they do. Yeah. Of course they do. Yeah. I lay things out on the floor and then, and then, um, well, not so much now because she's quite old, but the cats used to come running through and skid through the fabrics <laughs> and I'd just find everything in a pile. So you've got it laid out on your floor wall and then when you've put them together row by row you're going to iron one row one, one to the left one row to the right your rows will go together and nest really nicely that's what you should be aiming for but on your on your half square triangles i tend to always press them towards the dark side great it is useful isn't it i mean a design wall is useful or a space on the floor or on the bed you know, if you sew in a bedroom and you've got a bed in there as well and you can lay them on top of the bed just to keep them in the right place and in the right order. Yeah. And my top tip would always be to photograph as you go along. I was just going to say that. And especially when you've done it all and you've laid it out, take a picture of the whole thing. Yeah. Because then when you've muddled it up and sewn one of them wrongly, which, you know, there's always one you pick up and you do it the yeah, wrong way around, yeah. Yeah. then you've got something to reference. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. You know, you'll spot in a photograph as well if you've put one of the half square triangles round the wrong way. And it happens, you know, you'll spot it. And the trick is spotting it before you've sewn the whole thing together or Kellar uh, quilted it. Yes. But that has happened. Quilted and then you spot a half square triangle that's round the wrong way. And that ain't going anywhere. That's no, not getting unpicked. You've got to live with it. You've got to <laughs> live with it. But, you know, uh, there's a lot of... Culturally, it's quite common to put a mistake well, into something like a carpet or a quilt, yes. isn't it? Yes, I think the Amish do it. And the Persians, Persian yes. rugs, you're not allowed to create a perfect thing. No. Only no. God can create a perfect yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which so I quite like. Spot this gives us an opp opportunity to be imperfect, which I can be very easily. I was going to say, I think most <laughs> of us manage it without deliberately putting a mistake <laughs> into our work, don't we? I always manage that with knitting. You know, I always manage to put a pearl stitch in the wrong side of stocking stitch somewhere. Or uh, cables, where I'll go forward instead of back, so a cable doesn't quite travel correctly. But I, I just, I can't bring myself to unpick. Well, it's when you've things. discovered it's twenty centimeters yes, down as you work. No, right. learn to live with things. I know. It's fine. I once, I was giving a talk, and um, for a quilt group, and. Um, most quilt groups always start with some kind of show and tell. And this particular quilt group had a multi, multi award winning, amazing quilter <laughs> as a member. And she showed the most incredible quilt that she had made. All handwork, the whole thing was enormous. Wow. And then she and she designed the whole thing and she said, um, no, actually, I was about two thirds of the way through doing this. And I looked back at my original plan and I realised that the corner units were supposed to turn the other way. We'd all been ooing and ahhing and gasping at how beautiful mm. this quilt was. And then she told us that the corner units were supposed to be twisted around the wrong way. She said, so I finished making it 
And then I made the quilt again <gasps> with the corner units in the back, and then got out a second quilt and we were like, what, <laughs> what? <gasps> and you know, I mean, just one of the quilts would have been a lifetime's that's, work that is dedication, for most of us it? mere mortals. Amazing, amazing. But that's, that's about, you know, just celebrating what you've done, isn't it? And saying, I'm keeping it. I haven't got the patience. No. <laughs> but you've got to admire the chutzpah. Absolutely. Yeah. So that doesn't look, Catherine, that doesn't look big and scary, making half square triangles. It really isn't, actually. Out of triangles. It really isn't if you're just, and I think because they're nice and large. Yeah. Yeah, it's when, when they're little and fiddly. Yeah. Not so good. But no. these, nice and large. And as you say, if you pr really prefer to make them the sort of two squares, so down the middle, you know, either side of the middle and cut, you could still do that, but you will have to plan more carefully yeah. making, matching up your squares Absolutely. so that you get the right number. It's amazing how quickly how that can pattern start to appears. You see this pattern coming, can't mm. you? It is rather nice. See, Keep I can going, you'll have the whole quilt made. Oh, well, I know, I'm quite speedy. I can see that that one is a little bit wonky you can see how it's just gone out of shape a little okay. bit so they do but do you know what your iron is your friend yeah it's amazing how you can it's because some of these are sprayed and some of them aren't gotcha yeah mm. so you kind so of want consistent. to go all all or nothing <laughs> not half and half like i've done um if you find things aren't Absolutely, your iron can really help you to get things where you want them to be, yeah, yeah. can't you? Absolutely. So use use your iron to help you get things together too. Other thing is, Catherine, we block knitting and crochet all the time to yeah. make sure it's the right size and shape. And actually, I sometimes block a whole quilt after it's quilted. So once ah. it's quilted, it can change shape. It can pull in a little bit at the sides or slightly distort at the corners. And you can do exactly the same as you would with with um, knitting or crochet. You can spritz your quilt. You can pin it out on something. The carpet. I tend to pin mine on the carpet. Yeah. You can pin it I was going to say, and have you got it a dry. design wall? Well, I have got a design wall in my studio, but um, you know, I'm uh, I'm very lucky to have that extra space. You know, for, for but I mean, actually, most of the time, I use the kitchen table, the sitting room floor, or <laughs> you know, the the anywhere anywhere I can find space. But you can do that. You can block. Such a gorgeous array of fabrics, isn't it? And I mean, there's nine different fabrics in the quilt kit, but I think when you look at the actual finished quilt, you would swear that there were 25. Yes, that's true, actually. It's the fact, it's the fact that there's... What I like is that there's all pattern. Yeah. And I re, uh, you know, there's no solids in there and it doesn't suffer for it. It just looks fabulous. It really does. It really does. I mean, I mean, Kaif doesn't really do neutral backgrounds, does he, as a rule, in no. his quilts? And I think um, there's a lot of people who feel that they've got to have a little pattern and the solid and, and that's lovely. Yeah. And there's so many beautiful quilts. But I also feel that you can really, really with patchwork, anything goes. Yeah. And if yeah. you love lots of pattern, then do lots of pattern. Yeah. Yeah. But also what Kaif's done in that quilt, and if you have a look at it, you'll see this, that even though it's pattern against pattern against pattern, there is very much a deliberate choice about what pattern goes next to which. So you'll see, working out from the centre, you've got large scale and a much smaller scale next to it, and then a much larger scale print to that. And then you've got different colours which help to emphasise the design. Um, if you put big pattern next to big pattern and they're both of a similar sort of colour, they will blend together. And sometimes that's exactly what you're going for. But if you want that definition, it doesn't have to be as stark as bright red pattern fabric next to a solid white to make it pop. Although that certainly will work. Now, one little thing I want to point out to you in our sample, and I, and I point this out to encourage, to support, and as a top tip okay Catherine I wonder if you can just point out those couple of triangles that have been pieced together if I um, can see them in now. the you green see, now malachite shows, you can't in the green malachite them. towards the top point there. on the left there's one on the left and one on the right so there's one there and there's one on the opposite side and I think there's one just there so this is where the maker possibly miscut 
the fabric was possibly can you see how there's a seam if you just point out the seam for me please Catherine in that triangle that one the, yeah can yeah. you see there's a triangle and a strip sewn to it now this this is to encourage you at home if you're ever down to your last fat quarter and you've got to get three big squares out of it and you can only get two squares and then an odd shaped piece cut it up and piece it together and put it into your quilt you don't have to obviously I'm not telling anybody to do that but, <laughs> but you, you can. can you can and our quilting brothers and sisters have been doing that for centuries um and uh you know it's there on a cave quilt uh you might never spot it you mightn't have never well, spotted that. I don't think that. I would have done. You'd spotted it, but I don't think I would have done. But I love that. I love that feature. I love when I look. It's my favourite bit of an old quilt when I look and I see that sort of weirdly mismatched bit of fabric that's been put in or the fourth border, which is a different fabric to the other three sides. But, you know, it just all adds to the story of the quilt. And also it's a, it's a reason why um, you use the fabrics that you've got. So that, as I say, if you did ever sort of cut the strip the wrong way and then didn't quite have enough for the last half square triangle, piece your bits together and make it work. It, your quilt will be better. It'll be richer for it. The, the thing I also really like about this is that even the big designs, um, when you've cut them up and you've pieced them, there's, it, they're non it, they're non directional. Don't worry about which way up your watermelons are, Quite. or the chrysanthemums in the middle, because it doesn't matter. They're, they're beautiful anyway. Absolutely, absolutely. And in real life, I mean, literally, I'm going to say it. Don't worry which way your watermelons are. <laughs> morning, Margaret. Margaret's messaging to say good morning. Morning, morning, everyone too is watching. Um, thanks for your company this morning. We're having a bit of a laugh, aren't we, Catherine? We Oh, we're having a nice, nice little sew and a nice little chat. This isn't too stressful saying. See, I've said that. Now I'll go really wrong, won't I? But <laughs> it's it's the thought that you don't have to concentrate too hard. You know how sometimes you get patterns and you're really like, oh, which bit with which bit? Yeah. Yeah, this, this one's a nice, relaxing, mindful sew because it's nice, repetitive over and over. Yeah, same I unit. Like yeah. And if you're a complete beginner, then absolutely this is a great half square triangle quilt great place to start you know and they're nice big units as well so your quilt's going to grow quickly oh i've made an extra one that i forgot i was that, that can go down mindful <laughs> you see i said okay. no i want you to make the whole quilt and um, we're keeping you here <laughs> until we just you keep finish. going yes <laughs> what i was going to do is i was going to start even though it's I haven't done the whole row. I was going yeah. to start just putting them across together to Please to, um, do. Lovely message from Carla in Suffolk. Good morning to you both. A gorgeous quilt with cave fab fabrics. Great presentation. Love Carla from Suffolk. Thanks, Carla. Morning to you. It is a beautiful quilt, isn't it? It is. Now I am just trimming off the little the little points that you get, uh -huh. little dog ears yep. on half square triangles, because it does make putting it all together a bit easier. Mm -hmm. I think so. I always remember being on a show and the, and the presenter I was working with called them dog ends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ooh. there they go. Why do you cut them off, Catherine? I just think they go together better. They're out the way when you're piecing them. Yeah. And so, because sometimes when you start to put half square triangles together, because you've got these seams, you can, it can get a bit bulky under your machine, can't it? Yep. And they can get a bit trapped and chewed up. Yeah. They're unnecessary bits, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, so you, you don't really need them. So it makes a terrible mess on your sewing room floor, I have to say, when you stand and do them all. Yes. But um, I just think it does make it a little... Just a but little then, you know, it's, it, it's all part of the fun, isn't it? Picking them up off the floor for weeks afterwards. <laughs> I'm kidding. You see, this is this is why this is why bit. you take why you take a picture because it's so easy to get them round the wrong Design way. Design wall. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, isn't it? If only we all had an overhead camera at home. <laughs> Can't you just see everything beautifully? You there? can. It does help. It does mm. help. But this is why a design wall is good because it's the same thing. You're looking straight at it. Mm. Um, it's or why a take a picture helps definitely. I I've got you know those little those little two step step ladders. Yeah, I've got some of those in the craft centre, and we have a big table that I get the ladies to lay out oh, on, and then I get on my step ladders yeah. and take an overhead shot for them, 
And actually, I mean, it, even if it's if it's one where, you know, when you do lots of blocks and you then decide where they're going to go, if you do that, you can see the ones that are in the wrong place, you which really when you're can. looking at it, I don't know, in real life, yeah. you don't always spot, do you? No. So that overhead picture just makes all the difference. Absolutely, because we think we're looking at the whole, because I suppose in our peripheral vision we can see everything, but we are really focusing our attention on... on a particular part so you don't spot the blocks that are in the wrong place or the ones that are twisted or turned whereas a photograph you'll see it oh it's lovely and i love that watermelon fabric it looks really good doesn't it it's i think so when cool. it when it was on its own yeah. just in the thing i was like oh i'm not so keen on that one but actually when you put it together yeah lovely it's got a like you said anemone it's a real sea quality to it hasn't it it has and in it fact has. the whole thing's very greeny and bluey and turquoisey and sea-ish. It is. It's yeah. a sort of, uh, you know, well, I mean, ancient glade. It's got that look of ancient woodlands or forest or jungle. But I agree with you. It's also got a look of, you know, that kind of waters and exotic corals and seaweeds and kind of flotsam and jetsam. I never know which is which. No, I don't either. So we're going to put each one together, uh, right sides together, just matching them up nicely. You I, I find you want to make sure that the first seam that you're going to do is going to be away from you as you sew it. Mm -hmm. Else it will get, you can get it trapped under your foot. So the seam allowance is, is facing towards you. So the seam allowance is you. facing towards you, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. And I'm heartened to see those pins. Oh yes, I think you, you do need them just to help you get yourself nice and keep things together. Things do move otherwise. Yeah. Lots and lots of you have got this in your basket. Do remember to check out, please, so that you don't miss out. And then you can just sit back and relax and enjoy Catherine's demos, knowing no one's going to come in there and take that quilt kit away. Loads of you have already checked out your quilt kit. Well done if you have. Um, you're going to love making this quilt. It's a beauty. It really is. So when you've put your them together, you should have this quarter inch at the top and at the bottom. Don't think, oh no, my triangle hasn't gone right to the corner. At this stage, it shouldn't. This should be a quarter inch because when you put your rows together, then your points are going to come at the bottom. Ace. It looks really good as it's going together. It does. I love it. You see already, I've, I've <laughs> rotated. <laughs> Meticulous. I nearly put it on the wrong end. You've got to keep checking. You do. You do. But that's what your box of pins are for, you know, kind of Absolutely. flip it over, stick a pin in just roughly just to remind you it's going this way around because there is definitely something that happens between there and there <laughs> that twists yes. blocks around, doesn't it? Absolutely. I mean, I quite often as well, when I've pinned blocks together, I will just do a quick open it up, yeah, just, just a quick a little, visual check. Is it the right way? Yeah. Is it going the right way? Fine. And then sew it because I'm be honest with you Catherine there's nothing I hate more than ripping Unpicking. seams I know I know so when you've got one like this where you've got both the triangle half square triangles coming to a point at the top so you've got two lots of seams there I would suggest start sewing it at the bottom where there's no seams Absolutely. otherwise it can get a little bit chewed up and it, it's really annoying if you've got this beautiful half square triangle and all of a sudden it's like scrunching up under yeah. your machine yeah you'll get annoyed dawn's message in to say morning to both of you morning hi dawn uh, i met you both at festival of quilts so fab to meet you both is that this year were you there this year i was yeah i didn't get around to see you i was Wasn't too busy it but it was though. lovely and there oh. were so many lovely people there oh. We were all so joyful to I be know. out, weren't we? Yeah, it really <laughs> and was. And meet everybody again. I mean, the quilts were important, but for me it was the Festival of Quilters Yes. this year. Yes. It was really about the quilters, not the quilts. I mean, it was about the quilts, but it was lovely to well, be Well, it's always lovely together. to see the quilts. Yeah. It always makes me feel a little bit inadequate but <laughs> but actually very inspiring as well oh very yeah inspiring. and just being around people with the same mm. energy and the same joy and love got a lovely little message coming up now 
This is from Sylvia, who's in Northamptonshire. Morning all, loving the cave. If anyone is in North Yorkshire, hello, <laughs> we met. The Bowes Museum at Barnard Castle has a fantastic quilting exhibition oh, from is. Sylvia. Yes, it does. That's a really good reminder, Sylvia. Charlie once took me to Barnard Castle and um, we, he wouldn't tell me where we were going. And we left the house and, you know, I wasn't quite sure whether I needed to pack swimwear, my passport, who knew really. But, and all the time, every sort of 15, 20 minutes, he would say to me, do you know where we're going now? And I was like, I haven't got a clue, Charlie, <laughs> I haven't got a clue. And then literally as we were pulling into the drive, he said to me, do you know where you are now? And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> because I'd never been. I'd never been there was before. It, was it on your list of places you wanted to go yes. to? Oh, well, that's all right yes. then. Yes, and it is. See, like in London, my favourite place to go is the V&A. You know, because it's, it's a museum yes, it's of creative arts and decorative arts. And the Bose Museum is exactly that. But it's a collection of, of the sort of creative arts so they have quilts and textiles costume silverware um crockery pottery ceramics oh lovely glass, oh i shall have to go metalware it is so inspiring and beautiful and they do special exhibitions as well and they've got a lovely cafe sold afternoon it's going tea. on my list now then <laughs> there you go so when i've got a row together like this you see i just i've ironed it on the reverse making all my seams go in one direction and then I iron it on the right side just to get them really open because and, and <laughs> people often need a bit of ironing practice don't they mm. it's really easy to get it where you've got a little fold yeah. and then all of a sudden it won't fit with your next row so you really want to get those seams as open as possible yeah. I got... would encourage everyone to learn to love every part of the process don't just focus you know when you're making a quilt don't just say oh, I just love the sewing learn to love the precision of pressing you see I, I press that I'm really pleased because look my triangles meeting beautifully I can see it from here top. it's and beautiful I'm very pleased with that they don't always I have to say celebrate the little triumphs but it's because i'm being careful this morning and you know not rushing and we're being a good influence i hope so i hope so i'm pleased with that one <laughs> um claire 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 i want to give you a hug at this moment in time claire's message didn't say i made a mat with hundreds of one inch finished half square triangles oh my Catherine. word it was all going well until it was finished and I noticed one the wrong way round. No. no, really? Gosh. Oh, I do feel that. <laughs> Did you cry? I do feel that. Yeah, I might have but Claire, you know, what a what a story and what a special, you know. Can you laugh about it now? That's the thing. Yeah, can you laugh about <laughs> it now? No, <laughs> it's actually, it could have been much worse actually, Claire, because it would have been made so much worse if someone else had noticed it That's before true. you did. That's true. I would have gone into meltdown. Yeah, you see. Whereas if I notice it, I think, well, that's fine. Yeah, and you can, you can say to yourself, you can either say, well, I'm going to do something about it, or you can say, do you know what, I'll live with it. Yeah. But, you know, when the ladies come in and they've, they've put all their rows together at home and they go, look, I've done my quilt top. And I go, well, that's lovely. Have you seen that one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make you popular. No, no. But we all, we, you know, we all make some mistakes sometimes and some gaffes. Let me tell you about one of my favourites. You'll like this, Catherine. I'd gone to a class. And it was, I'd done lots of patchwork before, but tend to be hand sewn or just out of books or whatever. And I thought, I'll go to a class, learn how to do it properly. So I, I had to make like f four patchwork blocks over the first couple of weeks, add some sashing and a border, and then you laid it and quilted it. And um, I had got to the stage in the class, towards the end of the class, where I had layered it and I had pinned it together with curved safety pins. And everyone in the group had been saying to me, all oh, safety pins are brilliant because, you know, you can just... Now, they didn't say so over them. <laughs> Did you think that? But they said something along the lines of you can leave them in while you're quilting. You can leave them in while you're quilting. <laughs> so then I took the wall hanging home and I did vermicelli quilting and I quilted over the top <laughs> of 
all of the safety pins. And I'd thought about it as I was doing it, thinking, if I sew over a pin, am I still going to be able to get... And I said, of course you can, because you open the safety pin and... <laughs> Except then, at the end of course, I couldn't get the pin, so I had to unpick. Oh. If you've ever unpicked vermicelli quilting. Unpicking any quilting is a nightmare, isn't it? Oh, it makes me feel <laughs> sick now, but I unpicked everything. Oh. And oh, then well I redid it. I'd have thrown it in the bin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But this is this is the thing. If you don't know these things, that we should we well, never yeah, assume. Exactly. This is why we always say there are no silly questions because just because we know what we're talking about, it doesn't mean we think you do. The first time we will easily have got it wrong, possibly even the second and third. And how? <laughs> and how? My goodness. Uh, oh, Claire says I see it every time I walk past it. Oh. I've left it in. Only I've noticed it. Good. Excellent. Well, that's good, though, if you haven't done that thing where when people have said that's lovely and you go, but look at that. It's good if you haven't pointed it out to anyone. Right. Because we're quite good at, at, like, picking up our mistakes, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, Catherine, I yes. totally agree with you. Think of the mistake as your signature. I think that is such a brilliant sentiment. Well done. like that. See, that's common sense, isn't it? it think is. of it as your signature. See, that one... Because yep. I stopped concentrating, got my seam the wrong way, and it didn't ah, like it. Ah, no, you get it's a bit of a chunk. Yeah, you do. Get Another nice chunk. message coming up. Thank you so much for messaging in, by the way. We love it. My husband wallpapered the dining room in our last house. One drop was upside down. I pointed it out, but it didn't get changed. Can't blame him. Can't blame <laughs> love him. Love it. I do love the wallpapering it. in our house. I love wallpapering. Do you? It's like pattern matching fabric, yeah. really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that story. Thank you. It's brilliant. Um, I've never done wallpapering. My dad was an absolute whiz at wallpapering. The only thing that ever um, finished him off, and he couldn't do it, was wallpapering a ceiling. My yes. mum decided she wanted the, <laughs> she wanted the, wall, the ceiling wallpapered. And he started it and was like, can't do it and they got someone no. in to do that yes, but my dad was brilliant no, i've not that. done a ceiling my dad taught me to wallpaper i Did used he? to help him yes i used to love watching dad you know the whole and it was the accoutrement it was the equipment his paper hanging scissors the pasting table the i used to, i used to be allowed to mix the glue but that in was in a big it. bucket yeah. yeah and the way he would crease and yes, then you have to peel fold. it back yeah. and then cut and then smooth it down yeah. oh lovely process yes. Well, time runs away with us. I'm not it surprised. We're having the way a lovely time, aren't we? Yeah, we are. <laughs> but this is what you can be doing when you're working through a beautiful quilt pattern. You can just have lovely, mindful, restful time. Gives you a little chance just to kind of reminisce and think. There's that beautiful quilt, the ancient glade quilt kit from K Facet, but beautifully presented this morning by Catherine Wright. Thank you so much, Thank Catherine. You. I do love our hours together. <laughs> If you've already got your quilt kit, well done. If you've got yours in a basket or you're thinking about it, do remember to check out. Um, we've got some wadding that would work brilliantly with this pattern. Now we start with wool. Wool's a brilliant choice for the UK climate. It deals much better with the humidity and um, keep you warm in the winter, cool in the summer, naturally hypoallergenic, naturally uh, fire resistant. This is a queen size, 90 inches by 108. So uh, perfect size for your ancient glade quilt. 53.99. It has a superb loft, which means that kind of bouncy thickness to it, which really show off your quilting stitches. My top tip when you're using a wool batting, if you like using 505, and goodness knows I do, but I would still put some strategically placed um, safety pins as well because the layers within the batting you want to hold them fast as well not just the top and the bottom so that's the wool batting gorgeous choice absolutely gorgeous and it's light now we've got cotton 80 20 this is the wadding I use most often um, we call it a cotton wadding and it is generally cool you can see on the front it's still called a cotton batting but actually 20% is polyester and that makes it 
more washable, more stable, and it also improves the loft. Now this one's a king size, 120 inches square. So that's going to be more than enough for the ancient glade quilt. But you're going to use those scraps up, uh, table runners, placemats. I piece wadding together as well, wadding, uh, uh, Catherine, I don't know about you. Yeah. yeah but I'll either stitch it, ladder stitch it together or I'll use the new batting joining tape. They're brilliant. And then if you like polyester, we've got a, a Hobbs poly down. So this is a premium polyester quilt bat. Uh, $29.99. This is also king size, so 120 inches square. And that's very soft, very light, has a little bit more loft when you quilt it. So again, quilting the stitches really show up nicely with a polyester quilt bat. Okay. And also 505. Uh, we don't have very much of this left in stock and this is something that you don't really want to run out of. Um, this is 7 99 and that is for a 250ml can. You should get asked how many quilts would that do. It does of course depend on the size of the quilt but I would say you know a couple of twin quilts, yeah, double in a wall hanging, something like that. I'd certainly want to have a full can if I was going to make a king size mm, quilt. Yeah. To, to be on the safe side. I'm not saying you'll use every scrap, but definitely to be on the safe side. But when you think about the alternative, which is safety pins or basting, which might take you four hours or oh. so to pin base. See, I always say my rule of thumb when I'm pin basting a quilt is clenched fist, you shouldn't be able to touch anywhere on your quilt without touching a pin. That's a lot of pins. It is a lot of pins. Yeah. You don't really want more than about three inches between pins. Now, I know that a lot of people, when they pin, if it's a 10-inch block, they'll put a pin in the middle. And that's their, that's their pinning. But there's nothing holding your layers together across. You think, of, especially on the diagonal, yeah. that's yeah. maybe six or seven inches with nothing holding those fabrics together. So the more you pin, the flatter your quilt will be and the easier it will be to quilt. But if you use 505, get rid of that step. We're going to go to break now. When we come back, it's going to be all about colour, all about the rainbow. So don't go away. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learned lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out.
Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Hi there, good morning. Welcome to Sewing Street. I'm Stuart Hillard. It's really lovely to have your company today on this very special Remembrance Sunday. Uh, we've been having a wonderful time this morning with our great guest Catherine Wright and some beautiful, beautiful fabrics. This hour leading up to our two minute silence, which I hope you'll join with me at 11 o'clock for, um, is all about celebrating colour and about celebrating all shades of the rainbow. So it's going to be a beautiful hour and a great opportunity to see some beautiful fabrics, how to use those beautiful fabrics. And also we're going to talk a little bit about sort of colour theory and putting fabrics together, putting colours together. So hopefully some interesting tips and ideas as well. 
Uh, thank you for all your messages and all of your questions too. Lucy has uh, messaged in to um, ask about the quilt that I was working on yesterday. Um, and uh, You'd like to make one from Tula Fabric. What I'm going to be showing you actually, the quilt that's hanging behind me, the Tim Holtz quilt, is a very similar design and I'm going to be um, showing you how to cut that. And also the pattern for that is available on my website, Stuart Hillard Makes, and um, it's a it's downloadable pattern and it's a pay what you like uh, pattern. So you can pay nothing, you can have it for free or you can pay for it and that money goes to a charity and all the details are on the website if you'd like to do that. Okay, so let's get started with our hour that's all about colour. Let's start with the cave fabrics. No? Yeah, let's start with cave fabrics. Should we start with a bundle? Let's start with a bundle. We start with the orange bundle. Yeah, this is my favourite. These are totally me colours. Um, I love the warm colour palette. Uh, this is a fabulous selection that we've put together. You're getting six half meters of beautiful cave fabric there. These are really stunning. Let's have a look at them. Now this one has a sort of almost a batik -y look to it. Uh, it's got beautiful kind of all over ferny tendrils, little flowers too. Gorgeous kind of deep maroon background, pops of orange and this little bit of uh, lime green. Now it's 44.94 for those six half meters. They are beautifully coordinated. They're going to go together so well. Look at that for a fabulous abstract floral. Bright orange background, almost like a net in the background, capturing these beautiful abstract flowers. Now next up, something a little bit more naturalistic, I suppose. Um, almost like a sunflower type bloom in more of a burnt orange against this incredible deep azure background. Shades of purple and lilac in there as well. Orange daisy that's called. Now this next one is a really fun print. This features oranges. Um, it's a lovely sort of cranberry red background. That's a stunning fabric isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. I remember a time when you could only get clementines at Christmas. <laughs> Does that make me sound really old? How lovely. But we used to get, Mum used to get a box of clementines for Christmas. And that was such an exciting day when that box got open. <laughs> I would just like to point out I wasn't born in 1872. <laughs> That's lovely. That's got a beautiful vibe to it, hasn't it? Um, geranium leaves, isn't it? Geranium leaves and blooms there. And then this last one that's kind of an abstract. It's, oh no, yes it does. I would never have spotted that. This is called Lines. And can you spot Cave? Okay. You see it says cave. Huh. I don't think I ever would have spotted that. But that is a beautiful, beautiful selection of fabrics there in all these different beautiful orange and red tones with lovely pinks in there as well. Perfect if you wanted to um, boost your stash or make a quilt. Those six fabrics together would work beautifully. Choose something to coordinate with them. Now are these available on their own or just as a bundle? Some of them you can buy on their own and you can multi-buy, but the best way to get them is in this bundle. $44.94, that's your K Facet Collective Orange and Reds Fabric Bundle, three metres in total. That's delicious. That really is a juicy bundle, isn't it? All the oranges, all the reds. And of course, if you wanted a coordinate or you wanted a highlight colour, just pick out one of those highlight colours that Kaif has included. So, for example, this bright turquoise blue would make a gorgeous contrast to all of those fabrics. Or something like this um, lime green would also create an amazing pop of colour if you wanted just a little accent there. 
Now that's our orange red bundle. We've also got a green bundle, which I think you're going to love. And especially those of you that loved the Ancient Glades quilt kit that we had in the last hour with Catherine, um, you might have looked at that and thought, I'd like to make mine a bit bigger, or I'd like, I like the principle, but I didn't want to buy the kit. I've got some fabrics you could supplement with these fabrics here. £44.94 and here is a gorgeous selection of greens. Now this fabric deserves to be opened right up. It's called embroidered flower because I think you've got to see, oh that's the scale. How incredible is that? That's a fat quarter, you're getting a half metre of course. But that's just half of it. Isn't that beautiful? And I do love how Kaif combines greens with purples and lilacs. Absolutely stunning. So that's one of the fabrics that you're getting in there. But then here is more. So there's a green colourway of those amazing flowers with the sort of net background. This one looks almost like dragon scales to me. That's delicious. This one, very sort of naturalistic geraniums. And again, I think that's the genius of Kaif. He'll combine really abstract flowers and prints with geometrics, more of a, an all over print, and then with some very naturalistic designs as well, like the chrysanthemums and the geraniums that we saw there, or indeed this one, now, that you can't really have green oranges, but I suppose, are they limes? Are they grapefruits? They're still called oranges, the design. <laughs> we, we call them lime oranges. Yeah, we've just invented a new fruit because it suited us too. <laughs> I do love that fabric, though. This is my favourite colourway, actually, um, in this. I think the, it's the purple background and those bright lime oranges. You know what they say, if you can't beat them, join them, <laughs> make lemonade. <laughs> I make lemon, uh, orange and lime, or lemon and lime frozen lemonade. And that's delicious, let me tell you zesty, good when you're feeling a bit jaded, you know, and you just need a bit of a pep, just need something that's a bit mm, lovely. <laughs> and of course, you could do a grown-up cocktail version, couldn't you? That would be also very yummy. So that's our green selection. And again, for £44.94, you're getting those um, six cuts. Each cut is half a metre. You're getting six of them, so three metres in total. And again, pop a bit of coordinate with that and you've got a gorgeous quilt. You could even take inspiration from one of the quilts that you've seen today and make your own version. Now our last uh, bundle that we've put together of K-Facet fabrics is our black, white and blue. Ah, blue and grey, thank you, blue and grey. This is a lovely kind of abstract collection. I'm going to show you this one first of all, because this one I now know is called Lines, and it features Kaif's name. Um, Kaif, it's not called Kaif really, it wasn't the name he was given at birth. Um, but he read a book about a little, I think it was a little Egyptian boy called Kaif, and he decided that's what he wanted to call himself. So he changed his name to Kaif. I believe that's the story. Yeah. Much more glamorous than the name he was given at birth. Um, this is a cool, cool print. This is a really cool print featuring fish. No, his real name's Frank. Frank Fassett. I'd have called him Frankie. That is gorgeous, isn't it? I love that print. Really dynamic background, very exciting. And again, beautiful selection of colours. Hmm? 
I was telling our producer and director earlier that there have been quite a lot of occasions at quilt shows in particular where um, people have thought I was K Facet, which is I, always amuses me, really, I suppose, because, you know, <laughs> well, for obvious reasons. Anyway. <laughs> ah, there are those dragon scales. <coughs> I think it's just one of those situations, isn't it, where you sort of know you know that person, but you can't remember their name. So you think, oh, you must be K Facet. <laughs> this is a lovely floral. This would be gorgeous for a bag, actually. I'm a bit obsessed with bags at the moment, as you know. I do have a bag, but, but look at that. That is pretty special fabric, isn't it? And, you know, I'll be honest, I've never, ever seen that colourway before. No, never seen that colourway Kind of a retro floral look, isn't it? Amazing. I love the black black background. I, to be honest, I love anything with a black background. I might use that for my demo. Could I use that for my little demo? Yes. I'm going to put that down to one side. And then also this one here, which again, <laughs> I can't wait to find out what we've called this. Grey oranges. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Oh dear. Oh, you have to laugh, don't you? Grey oranges. Oh, I think. Oh dear. I think because I'm quite a foodie, and it just the thought of grey, grey oranges. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. <laughs> Sorry. Oh dear. <laughs> nice. Right. Sorry. I'm at that stage where I can't speak. All right. That's no good, is it? Oh, all right then. Okay. So that's that grey oranges. <laughs> Ah, oh, uh, some lovely messages. Let me just read these and gather my thoughts. Um, Lucy, morning all. The quilt yesterday, uh, oh yeah, it said about the measurements, yet yeah, there's a pattern available. Um, lots of you still tuning in, which is wonderful. Thank you. Um, yep, brilliant. Okay, right, let's see what we've got next. <laughs> what would you like to look at next? Yeah, let's have a little look at a demo. Now, what I wanted to show you, the quilt that's hanging behind uses Tim Holtz's new fabric range. Um, but it's actually a great quilt pattern to use for all sorts of fabrics, including K-facet fabrics. And I wanted to show you how versatile that pattern is and how you could use it. I've done something very, very similar with a Tilda, Tilda's new range which if you saw the show yesterday, you will have seen. And there will be a pattern for that coming out soon, but there isn't at the moment. Um, but let me show you how I did the, the Tim Holtz. But I'm going to combine this with some K-Facet fabrics to show you how well it would work. So first of all, I'll leave the, I've got some um, plain black that I'm going to use for the sashings, but I'm actually going to start by cutting out the main uh, fabrics. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to need to cut out is my main square. I need to give this a press as well. Because remember, I always say you've got to iron your fabric first before you start cutting it. If you want to just buy this retro floral fabric on its own, by the way, it is available by the half metre. Um, and you will get a sort of continuous length if you buy multiples. This would be amazing for dressmaking. It's a beautiful fabric. So I've just ironed a little bit of it there. Um, and I want to cut out uh, an eight and a half inch square. Now you might have an eight and a half inch square ruler, but I just want to show you how if you don't have an eight and a half inch square ruler, you can still cut eight and a half inches. So what I'm going to do, I actually like to go just ever so slightly generous and I'm 
lining up actually the nine inch mark on the selve edge. Okay, and I'm going to make a cut there and then I'm just going to move the ruler down a little bit more and I'll make another cut. So I've started with a sort of um, rough size. I just find this a little bit easier, particularly when you're working with a smaller board. Um, and then I'm going to do the same again across the bottom. So again, I'm going to measure. Now this time I'll just measure... I'm, I'm going to measure nine inches actually because I just want to get this sort of roughly cut out to start with. There we go. So now I can take the bulk of my fabric away and then I can start to square this up. So what I want is an eight and a half inch square. So I'll line up my ruler along the bottom, just making sure that I've got eight and a half inches under the ruler and cut, move the ruler along and cut again. And then I've just got one final side to go, which is the selvage side. So again, just measure in eight and a half inches from this edge and cut upwards. The little bit that I've got left over actually on that selvage would be perfect if you're into selvage quilting, which some people are. So there's my eight and a half inch square all cut out. Now then, the rest of, of my patches are all based on a two and a half inch strip. So for that, I'm going to fold my fabric in half. Now my mat that I'm going to be cutting on is actually um, shorter than the full width of fabric. And sometimes you find this, sometimes you buy fabric which is extra wide. Um, and so you need to be able to fold your fabric then anyway. So this is how I do it to make sure I end up with a nice straight strip. So I've got my fabric um, folded in half already and I'm going to line up the bottom fold with a line on my mat, okay, so that I know that that is nice and straight. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the top fabric down and what I'm aiming for is I want this top edge, this fold, to also be on a nice straight line, okay, which there it is. So I've got bottom on a straight line, top on a straight line, and then I'll just fold this extra fabric into the side so it doesn't move. So I want to do my cleanup cut first of all, which because I'm right-handed, I'm always going to have on the right-hand side. So now what I want to do, because I've got a kind of raw raggedy edge, I just need to clean that up and straighten it up. So I've got a straight line at the top, straight line at the bottom, which means that when I open out my strip, it's not going to be a V shape. So there's my cleanup cut. And now again, I'm going to turn the whole board and the ruler around so that the cleanup is now on my right hand side, two and a half inches under the ruler, straight line at the bottom, straight line at the top, and cut. Let's make sure that's gone through. Lovely. So I'll pop my fabric out of the way. And now when I open out my strip, you can see that there is no bend in the strip anywhere that it was folded. It's perfectly straight start to finish. So that's how to deal. So for example, if you're cutting a long border for a quilt and you want to fold the fabric, remember you can rotary cut up to six layers. Um, that's the way to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna put my fabric in half again. And this time I want to cut out two strips that are both 14 and a half inches in length for the sides of my block. So I'm going to start by cutting one side. I'll flip the whole thing around, measure 14 and a half inches from that cut, and then take off the selvage. So there are my two long strips, and those are both 14 and a half by two and a half. And then last of all, I need to cut out some small squares. Now I'm going to need six two and a half inch squares, which I don't think I'm going to get. I think annoyingly I'm going to get five, <laughs> but that's okay. So there's two and yeah, I'm going to get five. <laughs> Thank you. 
Grey oranges do not exist worldwide. Hannah, our producer, has checked. They're not a thing. Oh, okay. Bergamot oranges are green. Ah, now are they ugly fruit? Are they called ugly fruit, the green ones. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. We, we only get a fraction of the different fruits and vegetables that are available in the world, don't we? We only see like we only see a, like half a dozen varieties of apple and there are hundreds of varieties of apples. OK, so those are all my squares. I've got six two and a half inch squares, two two and a half inch by 14 and a half inch rectangles and an eight and a half inch square. The last thing that I need to do is just cut out some black fabric. Um, and these strips are all one and a half inches wide. And again, because I'm working on this um, cut and press mat, which isn't quite long enough for the full length of fabric, I need to fold it. So fold at the bottom and fold at the top. There we go. And then I can trim this, clean up down one side. Bit of a jagged, jagged cut there originally, wasn't it? I did that, in fairness. I did that. And then I'll do a one and a half inch strip. And just to be on the safe side while I'm cutting, I'll cut two just so I know I've got plenty. So then from my black fabric, I'm going to cut some little strips that will go in between my blocks or in between my units. So let's see now. So I need two that are eight and a half inches. So I just flip my ruler on its side. And then I need two that are 14 and a half inches, which I'm not going to get out of there, so I'll leave that for one second. We'll cut the 14 and a half inch ones from here. This is when, if you're making a whole quilt, cut all the longest strips out first, and then the little off cuts that you're left with, you can cut the shorter bits that you need, because you need quite a lot of one and a half by two and a half inch pieces, which I'll cut now. And number wise, you need two, four, oh, you just need four actually. So there we go. Okay, so that's all my bits cut out for my block. Let me show you how they go together now. And hopefully you'll see how this works really well with the K facet. So we start off with our eight and a half inch square in the center. Is that the red one? Ah, so this bundle actually has sold out now. So that was the, oh, beg your pardon. This fabric by the half meter is sold out, but the bundle is still available. Smashing, I understand, I understand. So that's going to go like that. So you're going to sew those strips with the squares, okay, to make a strip. And then you're going to sew the black will be sewn in here. So this will all fit together once it's sewn. And then down the bottom, you're going to do exactly the same thing. So that black strip will go across there. You'll have three more of these little two and a half inch squares down the bottom. So effectively, when you piece this together, um, you want to piece the square to the strip, to the square to the strip, to the square, and then sew the eight and a half inch strip along there. And then you'll make two of those and you sew them either side of your eight and a half inch center. And then the next job you're going to do is to sew a black one and a half inch by 14 and a half inch strip to the side. And of course, once this is all sewn together, this will all fit together beautifully. Quarter inch seam throughout. And then last of all, to make your block, you're going to sew the strip 
either side and that's your finished block. Now doesn't that look lovely? Yeah, I'm really pleased with how that's turned out and it really wouldn't matter whether you were using the orange bundle or the green bundle or the black and blue, the grey and blue or what you were using, that block would look lovely. Yeah, so it's, what I, when I was designing this block, what I wanted was a block that showed off how good a fabric looked as a big square, a small square, or a strip. It kind of, and imagine those calf colours in this quilt. Be lovely, wouldn't it? <laughs> you can get two of those blocks out of one half metre, by the way. And I mean, total, you'd need about two metres of black fabric for the whole quilt. And that includes the border too. So, black goes through by the half metre, so for two metres of fabric you would need four units. Now, the orange bundle, um, we're getting quite low on the orange and reds. So let me just show you those fabrics again. We've got that bundle up on screen, it's 44 94 and you're getting six half metres of fabric in all these wonderful, glorious orange, red, golden colours. And again, these would work so well with black sashing. I'll be honest with you, Kaif wouldn't put black. Kaif doesn't use black in his quilts in that way. He doesn't really use solids in his quilts. I'd be interested to see what, what, um, what colour you would use. In fact, let me ask you, what colour would you put for those sashings if you were using the orange? Give us a little message into the studio. Uh, Anne has said, Stuart, you've explained cutting so well. I now understand where I was going wrong. Thank you, Anne in Peterborough. Oh, and you're, you're welcome. I had a really good teacher, Liz Cornish in Birmingham many, many years ago, who taught me that tip about the folding top and bottom to cut. And um, I've done it ever since and it always works. Um, Anne just messaged in to say, thank you, Stuart, for making me laugh out loud, particularly as I'm having to unpick the same bit of my project for the second time. Mm, I understand, I feel your pain. Um, <laughs> Julia's message in to say, Morning, Stuart. I've just found a grey orange in my fruit, fruit bowl. <laughs> Thrown it away. Well done, Julia. Uh, got the giggles, love that. I've emailed a picture of the mat with the mistake. Oh, have we got that, please? The hundreds of one inch half square triangles with one that goes the wrong way around. That's being very, very honest of you and, and sharing. Uh, message across my bottom. Hi Stuart, chocolate brown would look great with the orange bundle. Oh, I totally agree. That would be delicious. Chocolate orange. Oh, can anyone get one of those for me now? That would be beautiful, beautiful. Um, I think green would look really nice too, a really um, sharp pop of green. That would look lovely. Or a turquoise, a really bright turquoise. So I'm thinking, hello, what about maybe that? That would look gorgeous. That's the alchemy. That's coming up very shortly, but it is very limited. Is that one called something like Allure? Intrigue, intrigue. Allure, I was thinking Miranda, I've got the Allure. It's what, sorry? Oh, it's just intrigue. <laughs> it's definitely not the Allure. Okay, so there we go, that's that little block. I hope that inspires you to have a go and, and just show you how you can use one fabric to create a really interesting block with plenty going on and that's very quick sewing as well. It wouldn't take long to stitch up at all. Um, there's just one inch finished sashing between all those blocks but like I say, if you want to get the pattern, you can have it for free from my website, Stuart Hillard Makes, but it's also there to pay what you want and um, all the money that I get for that pattern will go to a charity and there are details on the website. 
let me pop that to one side. I do like to be able to do a little demo every now and then. Rings the changes, doesn't it? Um, did we manage to find that picture of the... Oh, brilliant. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Now then, we'll do 10-inch charm packs, K-Facet 10-inch charm packs. We're limited stock on all of these, um, so, so be quick. Now, you wouldn't be able to make my block behind me with this, but you could do a smaller version. You could definitely do a smaller version. I'd have to work out the sizes. Four different choices. We're going to start with Emperor, which is all the purples. Now, details are on screen. I won't open this because we have only got limited quantities, but we've got a lovely picture actually that shows you the sort of fabrics you've got inside. It's all the purples. So if you're a purple girl or boy, you've got 42 10 inch squares and you do get some repeats, I think. The thing with CAFE is, you know, the fabrics are so multicoloured and so multitonal that you could put two identical squares next to each other and you wouldn't actually know it most of the time. So that's the Emperor. That's beautiful. And if you want a single colour quilt, I'm doing quotation marks because it's anything but a single colour. That's what's so exciting about his fabrics. Now, next up... Something like that, isn't it? It's not parakeet. It is. It is parakeet. It is parakeet. So this is kind of ice cream colours. It's kind of oranges, peaches. These are the colours you'll get. Let me show you. There they are. So kind of ice creamy colours. So peach and like a soft pink Soft blue, soft blue. I suppose it's more, it's like a pastel collection, isn't it? Very, very pretty. Would make a gorgeously spring or summery quilt. Now, next up, we've got this one's called Cool. This is cool. Now, this is lovely, cool, fresh greens. And there's some gorgeous fresh blues in there as well, but they're more of the sort of turquoise blues that blend really nicely with greens. This would go beautifully, beautifully with the Emperor pack, all the purples. That would look yummy together. And then last of all, we've got this one called Prism. I know this one because I've used this one and it is just a riot of rainbow colours. It's all the colours of the rainbow in cave style. Um, it's glorious. You've got reds, oranges, golds, the most beautiful bright sharp chartreuse greens, blues and purples. It is absolutely delish. Have a look at this. Boom. There's a, there's a colour wheel for you. Can I just mention very quickly, we have got a colour and tone guide. These are worth their weight in gold. Quilters, dressmakers, bag makers, anybody, even if you're decorating your living room, these really help. They've got a dial here to help you pick complementary colours, split complementaries, and also triadic colour stories. Triadic just means like three equal points on the colour wheel. They go together beautifully, however you twist and turn it. And then also a ruby, um, uh, sort of, uh, I don't know what they call it, a ruby estimator, is it? A tonal estimator. So what you do there is you, you put that over fabric and it neutralises the colour. So all you see is the tone, how light or how dark it is. Just help you, especially when you're trying to find a value and you want contrast in your fabrics. That's particularly important if you're using multicoloured and very bold fabrics like K-Facet. It can be very difficult to look at them and see which is a light fabric and which is a darker fabric. But use that Ruby Viewer and you'll be able to see that. It's a, a bargain actually at 6 dollars It'll really help you with your colour choices 
putting together color schemes and also making sure that you've got enough tonal variation when you come to piece. We've got Claire's picture now with her, oh my goodness, with her signature on it and her hundreds of little half square triangles. And you know, when Claire said it was a mat, I didn't realize it really is a mat. Um, it's the pale blue section. Oh yeah, I can see, yeah, yeah. So in the very center on the left, they should be sort of like half stars around the outside edge. Can you just see where there are two, almost like two bow ties on the left-hand side of the pale blue? Halfway up. Claire, I don't care, it's still absolutely phenomenal. How much patience and skill. Look at the points. Forget the bit that's round the wrong way. It's incredible. Please tell me you don't let people walk on that and wipe their feet. Claire, you're a legend. Not just for making something incredible, but also for being bold enough to say, look, sometimes it happens. It's still an incredible piece of work. Mwah, we love you. Well done. Now then, um, we've got a great couple of books as well. This is called The Sizzle Quilt. It's by Becky Goldsmith. Love Becky Goldsmith's work. She does amazing applique, but this is mostly about piecing. But in the book, um, she talks a lot about hot and cold or warm and cool colours. And this shows really well um, what I'm talking about and what Becky's talking about. It's those hot colours, those really warm colours, the reds, the oranges, the yellows, but yellow can be hot or cold depending on whether it's a sort of really sharp, citrusy, cool yellow or a really warm golden yellow. Um, and then the cool colours are those more typical kind of blues, but again you can get warm blue, so <laughs> I don't know if I'm explaining this terribly well. <laughs> Oh my goodness, look at those two quilts. Same quilt. They are dazzling. Warm and cool. That's terrific, isn't it? And this is all made with kind of solids or semi-solids. Foundation paper pieced with a goodly bit of applique in the borders, which she's really known for. You could do it as a cushion front, just one of those blocks, couldn't you? There is Becky Goldsmith, one half of Piece of Cake Designs. You might know her from Piece of Cake Designs with Linda Jenkins. Um, but I mean, absolutely incredible and such a way with colour. So if you want a new project, something for the new year, real showstopper of a quilt, that's the Sizzle Quilt. It's 19 99 and it's the Scissor Quilt book by Becky Goldsmith. Great, great sort of theory of colour in there as well. But don't forget my real top tip for this one is that colour and tone guide that we've got. I think that's terrific. Um, can I just mention one more book? The Colour Thread and Free Motion Quilting. You know how much I love free motion quilting. 36 quilting designs in here and how to quilt them. Absolutely tons of inspiration in this book. This could be, treat. you could treat this as a coffee table book just to get your quilting mojo up there. Loads of stuff in here about colour theory, which is very useful. This is a very good resource book for quilters, sewers, machine embroiderers. So I would definitely think about including that in your basket. Very, very inspiring and lots of gorgeous quilting patterns. And there's the author, Terry Lucas. Hmm, love her top. Oh, anyway, I digress. <laughs> now then. Yeah, let's go Tim Holtz. Um, now. Gone. Sorry, that one's gone. Uh, have we got all the others at the moment? So these are the remaining nine fabrics. There are 10 fabrics in the new Tim Holtz Alchemy collection. 
This one, there's half a metre left. Half a metre left. That's my top corner. Yeah. There it is. Top corner. It is an amazing, look at that. It is an amazing fabric. There's so much there. And this, of course, would go absolutely incredibly well with Kaif's fabrics because Kaif doesn't do particularly do kind of all over just sort of one colour patterns very often. Um, so that would be good if you just want somewhere that's still intense and colourful and gorgeous, but just perhaps a bit more restful in terms of pattern. So that's that one. Smolder is the charcoal -y grey. This again would be fantastic as a blender actually to use in your quilts. That's amazing, isn't it? That is so, and that is smouldering. It's like the ashes that are left. We're so low on all of these. We only launched it on Tuesday. Um, so I think it's a bit of a record for selling out. Enchanted, is it the really intense ending eight, six? Yeah, this is called Enchanted. It's absolutely gorgeous. This is a very regal. This is Roman Emperor toga purple, isn't it? Really intense and gorgeous. I love the fact that you've got more blue tones in there as well. And you've these pinks too. Pops of colour. I mean, it's almost like some kind of amazing sort of sky before a storm. And there's just a bit of light shining through it. A lot of people said when they saw my quilt that it looked like stained glass. Um, thank you. Uh, it's that look, isn't it, of light streaming through, swirling glassy tones. It is absolutely stunning. That is called Enchanted. Now, Alexa, Elixir, Elixir, <laughs> Alexa. <laughs> elixir, like the elixir of life. That's what alchemists were trying to find, wasn't it? They were trying to find various things. They were trying to find how to turn base metal into gold. That was one of the goals of the alchemist. Another one was to find the elixir of life or the sort of elixir of immortality. Um, I think if you were going to find the elixir of life, it could very possibly be this swirling green potion-like liquid. It does have a liquid look to it, doesn't it? It looks almost like alcohol inks dropped onto a wet surface so that they mingle. I don't know if you've ever done, um, like, is it called feathering? What's, what's the method called? They use it for bookend papers. We drop inks onto liquid and then comb through it and then drag paper through or place paper. I mean, it's just got that wonderful look. It is incredible. You can see, can't you, Tim's background in um, paper crafting and inking and painting. It's got a very painterly hand behind it. Important question from Anne. Morning team, what is vermicelli quilting, please? Uh, Stuart mentioned it earlier. I'm getting lots of pasta dishes when I look it up. Oh, bless you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I say I would just say these things. So if you've ever seen that quilting, which is like a squiggle, which goes all over the quilt, but the lines don't ever actually cross. It's like you've dropped a length of spaghetti or vermicelli and wiggled it all over the quilt. That's called vermicelli quilting or meander quilting. Sometimes people just give it the generic name of free motion quilting, but I mean actually any kind of quilting that's done with a darning foot where you're moving the fabric and it is free motion quilting. But um, yeah, it's just, it's one type of quilting. Sorry. <laughs> But hopefully it's inspired lunch. Uh, this one does end in 70. This is David Hockney swimming pool blue to me. If you've ever seen David Hockney's painting, I think it's called Blue Swimming Pool. Um, there's a whole range around swimming pools. This is that 
intense, I'm on holiday, I'm somewhere in, I'm one of the Greek islands. It is glorious, isn't it? Pools of almost sort of molten colour. It's absolutely delicious and so many different tonal variations. And you see in my quilt how just cutting simple shapes, squares, large and small, rectangles, you could do big half square triangles in this and piece them together maybe with a solid, maybe together. Um, how you could make the most glorious quilt or bag or garment. Quite limited stocks on all of these, aren't we? Very limited stocks, very limited stocks. Three metres of that one left. Now the other blue is called Divine. There's only one and a half metres of this left. This is a gorgeous one. It's inky and deep. Little bits of just very, very soft pink. Just every now and then. There's almost a little bit of green in here as well. Um, I love how on the side, <laughs> I remember reading this while I was making the quilt. The fabric is designed to have a distressed appearance with printed imperfections. So any like if you see and you think, oh, look, there's a little bit of green there in that fabric. You might just be able to see that very subtly. That is deliberate. That's printed. These little spots here. It's all about creating that deliberately distressed look. It's just Tim Holt's signature. That is smashing. Now then, we've three more fabrics left. Oh, OK. Now, I'm going to get rid of these ones, the, the gold and the deep purple. Those have already sold out on pre-order. So well done if you got those. But we have got the last print, which is the pink. This one is called Enamoured. Enamoured. Very romantic, beautiful, deep, rich magentas, little bit of peachy orange in there as well, which just brings it to life, adds a bit of fire to the print, to the colourway. Love this dark. It's almost like marble, isn't it? Some of it it's almost looks like marble, Italian marble, but pink. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. These fabrics, by the way, are digital prints, okay? So they're incredibly detailed. One thing I would highly recommend when you're working with digital prints is to use a Microtex needle and as fine as you can go, 65 or a 70, just to really cleanly pierce the fabrics. If you use a very thick needle or a needle that is even remotely blunt, what you can end up as it goes through the fabric, you'll get little white lines can come off where you haven't pierced the fabric cleanly and you've actually pushed onto the fabric as the needle's gone through and it'll pull the threads very slightly and you'll just get to see a little bit of white. But if you use a brand new needle and a sharp, and in particular a Microtex, um, it will pierce cleanly and beautifully. Uh, it is just amazing fabric. Tim, you are a genius. Now, I would just like to mention, if I may, the backing fabrics that we've got, the rainbow. Now, these are regular width fabrics, but we've put them into bundles with backing in mind. I think, to be honest with you, I think using on the back would be slightly wasting the beauty. They are massive pieces of fabric. Um, it's from the Over the Rainbow. And let me just show you, look, this is half, and then it goes into the greens, and then into the peaches and the oranges. We've got the bright version, 55.92 for four and a half meters. That includes a half meter for free. And then we've also got a pastel version of that too. Now, we are coming up to 11 o'clock, and that means on this very special Remembrance Sunday that we're going to join the nation in observing a two-minute silence to remember our war dead and all of the servicemen and women and all of those involved in, in um, struggles in the past. Please join us for a two-minute silence.
Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Hi, I'm Claire from Native Lighting. I set up Native Lighting 18 months ago when I realised there was a real lack of craft lights in the market that were high quality, affordable and modern. Not only do Native Lighting lamps give you the perfect lighting for your craft, but they also look amazing in your home as well. I started to train as a florist when I was much younger and it re made me realise how you need the light on all the different colours when you're trying to match the colours with the flowers. And that's what's really important with your crafting as well. I've been in the lighting industry for 10 years and worked in many different sectors, but my heart always lies with crafting. I think that also comes from my time of training as a florist when I just used to love working with all the flowers and the colours and how different they could look in different colours of light. My top advice would be, when you're thinking about buying a light, you need to think about where you're actually going to be doing your work. We've got lots of different types of lamps. We've got floor lamps, we've got magnifiers, we've got portable lamps, and we've got desk lamps. If you're sitting in a sofa or a chair, I'd suggest that you use one of our floor lamps. If you're working with intricate details, then have a look at one of our magnifiers. We've got three different types here. We've got our seven inch one, we've got our four and a half inch one, and then we've got a desk version here as well. All of those magnifiers have all three different color settings, including the really important daylight for your color matching, and they've all got brightness settings on them as well. If you work with a sewing machine, our Lumina lamps are absolutely amazing because you can bend and wrap them around the sewing machine, which is brilliant for when you're working on a sewing machine and you can get that light exactly where you need it. If you do Facebook Lives or you like to um, do video tutorials for people or you're doing teaching online, then our ring light is amazing for that because you can obviously use that, put your mobile phone in there and also that we've got a remote control which will operate that for you. You may have a cutting table or a wide area that you need to light up. Then I'd suggest you go with our, our task lamp here which gives you a really wide spread of light. If you're on the move, when you're working, then we've got a selection here of portable lamps. We've got our reverse lamp, our zigzag lamp, and our LED desk lamp. These are rechargeable, so it means that you can charge them up and then you can take them with you and you've still got light when you're on the move. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters so you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there!
We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. In need of a crafting fix, there are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Welcome back to Sewing Street. I'm Stuart Hillard. Thanks for your company today on this very special Remembrance Sunday and thank you for joining with me in those two minutes of silence to remember all. Now, in our hour today, we've got the wonderful Catherine Wright coming back to demonstrate a gorgeous project, a wall hanging project that's all about the solar system and the planets. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about the world, our planet and its place in the universe over the last few weeks uh, with the big climate conference going on. So this is a very relevant wall hanging and I'm sure you've got people in your family who have had their interest peaked and sparked by all this talk and where we are in the whole solar system. Let's have a look at this gorgeous detail on this wall hanging. Now I'm going to show you first of all the kit that you can buy to make that wall hanging and Catherine Wright is here to show us how to make it as well with some fantastic little hacks and additions as well which I love. Now to start with we've got a brand new and exclusive panel uh, which we've got right here which is for the solar system. So what you've got there is the background to start with which has these concentric circles dotted lines now you can leave them just printed if you want but you could also stitch them kind of big stitch sashiko style quilting would look awesome um, with the lovely kind of phases of the moon and a starry sky so there's the main background of the wall hanging and then down the bottom you've got all of the I don't know if I want to say the important planets. Are there more planets? All the planets. There aren't any other planets, we don't are really, there? I don't think we know of many others. We don't no. know of any others. Fair <laughs> enough. I'm just giving you my level of knowledge now <laughs> about astronomy. And this is um, not a planet. And I'm sure I should get into terrible trouble for calling something a planet which isn't really a planet or it's a star. But anyway, we've got, yes, controversially Pluto is on there, which of course was demoted, wasn't it? few years ago. Um, you've got the little third rock from the sun right there. Um, and we've got Mars, we've got Pluto's right there, we've got Neptune, we've got Uranus, we've got Mercury, Saturn, Jupiter, the sun of course, and Venus. There's Venus. Um, beautifully rendered and that lovely label, the solar system. Uh, and I particularly like the little label here that says made with stardust. That's cute. Uh, every family's got a space fan in the family, haven't they? Or often um, it's the whole family, mom, dad, the kids, they're all really into, might be Star Trek or Star Wars or actual astronomy. This is a great, start to a project. Now also within that bundle you're getting this really beautiful regal purple fabric. This is for your border 
And can you make your backing out of this as well, Catherine? Yep. Yep. Got plenty there. Perfect. So half a metre for a pieced backing, borders, um, oh, not borders, that's printed on, isn't it? This is your backing and also your tab top. Yeah. So plenty there to make that. You could always make a sleeve on the back if you didn't want tabs, of course, but choices, good to have them. Um, and then you're also getting the quilt batting. Now this premium polyester craft batting, you are, do you need to piece this to make the backing? Not that, no, not that. No. no, I don't believe so. No, because this is 40 inches square. That's plenty big enough, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. So, <coughs> so this is a 40 inch square, square um, craft wadding made of polyester. So that is going to be absolutely plenty to wad your wall hanging as well. So just add some thread and possibly some bondo web, depending on which method you're going to choose for your appliques. Lots of different creative ideas with this one. I'm rather liking it. Now, if you don't want to make the wall hanging, we've also got other panels in this same theme. Now, this is a bundle with all of the uh, different panels that are available. So there are uh, three panels available. Oh, I like these. Look at that. This one's called the Night Sky and this is Fabric Squares. That is fabulous. I'm just going to... That is fabulous. So you've got all the planets there and then you've got these different starry night bats. I'm thinking uh, rucksack backpack for nice. college made out of those piece together or even leave them as they are just cut your shapes out with the white lines in between use those lines for quilting that's terrific isn't it i love the colors those kind of intense purpley blues the oranges the reds if you were lucky enough to nab any of the tim holtz um alchemy fabrics wouldn't they go beautifully with that so let's pop that. That's your square. So you're getting that panel. Um, that one you effectively getting free when you buy the bundle because you'll only actually end up paying for the two larger panels. So this one is a mixture of different width strips. Um, let me show you this. Now I like what's been done here because rather than having all of the strips the same width, kind of like our standard two and a half inch jelly roll strips, what we've got here is a mixture. So we've got all of the different planets in a row. We've got night sky. We've got um, this one further down, this kind of gray and black one I really rather like, that's got sort of phases of the moon and constellations on it more purples and blues, so some good kind of blenders that you could use. And then look at this strip at the bottom, and that looks like a five inch strip to me. That's awesome. This could very easily be turned into a quilt, just as it is. Layer it, quilt it, mm. bind it. Don't have to do anything else. If you want to cut it out and piece it together, of course, do that, combine it with the squares as well. That would look amazing. Um, and then this last panel, this is one of our extra large fat quarter panels. So here you're getting four extra large, look at those. This is amazing. That is really cool. So that's like a sort of map of the constellations the yeah, air book covers, nice, iPad case, something like that. Um, all of the planets all over. And then a couple of really cool, this one down here is the night sky. But I look at that, that's proper sort of the background for a piece of art, isn't it? If you wanted to applique onto that. It would also make a really cool base for um, like a door, um, like a name, yeah like Alex's room or something yeah, yeah. like that, you know, nice at college um, or at home. Teenagers, do not enter. Can you relate? 
And then this one, now on first inspection, it looks like just a navy uh, piece of fabric, but actually what you've got printed on there are, there's purples and blues, kind of star-like constellations. The telly doesn't really do that justice. Now, let me just pop that to one side. What an amazing collection of fabrics. Now, of course, you're not getting the constellation panel that Catherine's used for the wall hanging. So, great way to combine these. You can buy that panel on its own, but also an amazing bundle to get everything together. Really cool. Let's just quickly look at all of these separately. So first of all, that sort of big fat quarter panel, um, the details are on the screen. That's 19.99. So that's this one that I just showed you. There we go. There's that one. Really amazing. <coughs> then the second panel that we've got, is this the stripes? Okay, so this individually, and that's amazing value, $19.99 for that. And like I say, you could literally layer that with some quilt bat, quilt it and bind it, and you've got a sofa throw or a little quilt have, have on the bed, like a cuddle quilt. It would make a great cot quilt or, you know, toddler quilt too. Get them thinking about space exploration when they're young. That is an amazing piece of fabric and would be really cool to cut up as well, of course. I'm always inspired when I see strips of fabric together. I always think about wedge rulers, you know, those really big wedge shaped rulers that you then piece together into circles or arcs. That would look so cool. And then the last panel that we've got that's available on its own are the squares. You can buy this as a bundle, remember, and you'd get this one free. But um, the Night Sky Solar System 40 square fabric panel, um, I think that is absolutely incredible. That is such a cool piece of fabric. And again, you could just layer and quilt that and that would look really cool on the wall. Or even where you've got sort of perhaps planar squares, you could applique letters to um, sort of spell something out. Maybe a banner. Mm -hmm. Keep out. <laughs> Shall I make that for the gallery? I make that for the gallery. I won't make it. Beautiful though. Such a gorgeous collection of colours. I love it. Um, we're going to go over and meet Catherine now, who's here for her second hour of demos. Catherine, welcome back. Hello again. So what did you think when you got the fabric sent oh, through? Oh, it's lovely. They're such gorgeous, they're lovely colours. Mm. They are really lovely, these like purpley, pinky colours really nice um and it was fun actually um didn't look <laughs> i learned a bit about the planets well absolutely and the yes. order. my children told me a really good way of remembering the order oh please you know one of those mnemonics yeah and i've promptly forgotten it oh. it starts off with my very easy method and then i get stuck <laughs> so it isn't is it clearly not that easy then <laughs> so that would be is that mars venus earth, earth. Mate, Me yeah, yeah. My, my very easy, yeah, Mars. It, no, it's Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. Ah, but it's gotcha. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, the dwarf planet, which isn't ah, really a planet. Which isn't a planet. No. Anyway, on this one, we decided to applique the planets on, and we did free machine and free machine embroidery with um, metallic threads. You can see the close up, can't you? There. Yeah. Because um, I just thought, you know, space and yeah sparkle. stars and stars and sparkle and it just seemed to go <laughs> how did you applique them with bonder web okay i know i watched uh was it sally ann the other week doing about 10 hundred different methods of applique <laughs> <Ten hundred. laughs> well there seemed to be about five actually yeah. but some of them seemed incredibly complicated okay. and i do like bonder web <laughs> yeah bonder web gives a great finish doesn't it, it you know does. and it's easy peasy yes so just bonder web on the back of the panel before you cut things out larger than the shade so, so with this one i put the wadding on the back of the panel mm -hmm. and then we applique the planets 
and then I added the backing. Ah, cool. Okay, so um, a little bit quilted as so well. So it's then. a little bit quilted as well. Otherwise, you it might all be hanging a little bit free inside. Yeah. So it did all hold it on. Yeah. And obviously, you can put your. I mean, I've sort of arranged mine in a little bit of a spiral, but obviously, you can put them wherever you like, can't you? Mm. Ideally, in the right order. I was going to say, it would, it redesign would, the solar well, no, system. It would be very annoying if you didn't have them in the right order, but you can have them at any bit on the circle. Yes, yes, well, yes I suppose <laughs> so. Yes, yeah. sometimes you get them just in a line going straight out, don't yes. you? I don't know if that ever actually happens with the planets. Are they ever just in a line? Oh, I You're like my thought, guru now so. about the well, solar oh, no, system. Well, no, I don't know room. very much. I wouldn't have thought so because their orbits are all so different, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. We've opened a can of worms. Yeah, we're right, way out of our depth here. We both well, are, let's aren't go, we? Yeah, let's talk about sewing. Yeah, let's uh, do that. <laughs> Just to mention the metallic threads and the um, kind of the sort of sheeny embroidery threads. Uh, we've got a great collection from Gutterman, metallic and bobbin thread set. Um, you've got some gold and silver in there, which would be absolutely beautiful. You've also got things like the grey the blue, the purple, um, the, the, the golden yellow would be absolutely beautiful for machine embroidering or free motion quilting around the planets just to create a bit of extra sparkle, a little bit of extra something something. Yeah, I think there's real opportunities with this to make it really lovely actually. Mm -hmm. um, like you say, you could quilt around the circuit, circles, the little orbit circles. It would be quite nice embroidered, wouldn't it? Oh, it would be lovely. I variegated think thread. Yeah, with variegated threads, definitely. And I also want to hot fix crystals. Yeah. Yes, in the background bling it up. The stars, bling it. Absolutely. Yeah, if in doubt, add some bling. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other idea we had, apart from just appliqueing them on, was um, to use hook and loop so that you can use it as a little learning tool as well. Mm, I love that. So that's what I was going to show you how to do. Now we do have the hook and loop tape available as well. It's on this show. So hook and loop, um, you know, kind of the fuzzy side and the side that's got the sort of barbs on it. I think originally invented um, after seeing, uh, was it teasels or something like that? Oh yeah. Or burrs on a dog's fur that had kind of stuck, taking a dog for a walk, all the burrs were stuck to the dog and the inventor of the original hook and loop tape thought, what an ingenious method. Yes. And where would oh, we be without it? I don't think the dog was as impressed, but certainly the inventor <laughs> was Sticking inspired. things on the dog. <laughs> yeah, quite. <laughs> so we have got that available. It's £1.49 and you get a metre of 20 millimetre wide hook and loop tape. Is that the one you used, Catherine? Uh, I believe so, yeah, yes. Perfect. Yes. So, I mean, if you worked in a nursery or a school or anything like that, to make one for that, where you have to put them all on, would be brilliant, mm, actually. Mm. Would be good. Totally agree. So how would we do so that? So what I have done, I have cut out all my little planet squares and corresponding little squares of wadding and little squares of backing fabric. You can see I've done that. I've pinned them all together to keep them organised. And we've got our pieces of Velcro. Well, the one I've done, I've already put the sun in the middle. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to fix one side of your Velcro to a point on your background and this okay. also when you're doing that this will work a little bit like it will again help the backing all stay together won't it because mm, it will quilt it very slightly so you stitch that through the, the top and the batting yeah so i've used my 505 to um put the panel onto my wadding first do you know now what i'd never used it till i came to sewing street and now it's my best friend oh absolutely <laughs> Absolutely. So we'll just trim that into a nice little square. Yeah, okay. we do love our 505. We have sold out. Um, okay, so I'm just going to pin my Velcro on to hold it in place. Ooh, ooh, Max has messaged in to say, guess what? Pluto is back as a planet again. Is Welcome it? back, Pluto. <laughs> why was that then? Mm. I wonder why that is. Mm. Oh. Max, could you tell how us how, why? Um, 
Did they just like, lo did Pluto lodge a formal complaint? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Adele's messaged in to say, my very easy method just speeds up naming planets. There we go. <laughs> thank you. Oh, Adele, thank you. My very easy method just speeds up naming planets. Which and there is brilliant we go. mnemonic if you can remember it. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. <laughs> that is brilliant. Thank you for that. Right, I am very carefully going around my little square of Velcro. I've put the sort of the hooky bits yep. on the backing. It doesn't really matter which way around, but I yeah. do them all the same. If you were going to do the embroidery, of course, you'd do that first, wouldn't you? You would, yes. Do all your little sort of kind of like sashiko style or big stitching. Yeah, that would be really big nice. Stitch quilting style. I'd want to embroider little stars all over it as well. In metallic threads, That'd I think. That'd be lovely. Like you said, there's so many possibilities. You could um, embroider or applique a little uh, spaceship. Yes. I mean, if you were into certain certain sci-fi yeah. programmes. Sorry, shouldn't I have said that out loud? <laughs> so any of the, the sci-fi yes, programmes that everybody's into, yes. um, I think you could you know incorporate some of those ideas into it you for somebody who was could. into them you absolutely could you know a mark francis would go cock a hoop over this wouldn't he, he, he would. loves a bit of sci-fi he would uh, i didn't realize catherine i don't know if you know this but we were with some friends sitting outside in their garden we had the um chimenea is that how you say it going yeah oh yeah. We're, we're fancy and um, it was getting dark and they pointed out the satellites ah, going moving. overhead yeah. that you can watch travelling across the sky. Well, this was news to me. I didn't know that. And I just found it completely mesmerising to think that I was watching the satellites going overhead. I, I did know it, but in relation to Christmas, because there's always got one that goes around and they point it out on Christmas Eve and say to show children because it's Santa's. Like oh, going. of course. But I never stopped to think that actually you would see that all year round, <laughs> not just on no, Christmas no, Eve. No, 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 no. Except only not available Santa's on Christmas sleigh. Eve. Yeah. yeah, only available on Christmas Eve. Right, so then on the back of your... Oh, a different <coughs> one. Max has also um, come back to me with... Many very early monkeys jumped suddenly under naughty Pluto... That's another mnemonic. That is another one. Many very early monkeys jumped suddenly under naughty Pluto. There's just too many words for me to remember them. Yeah, I would find that hard to remember. <laughs> I think it's easier planets. just to remember the names Sorry, of Max. the planets. Sorry, Max. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for, for mess messaging back in. And Pluto is a dwarf planet, isn't it? It's a dwarf yes. planet. Yes, yes. Um, so I'm going to just cut all together so that they're the same size. I'm going to cut my planety shapes into a, a circle just freehand well I am just freehanding it if you're I do a lot of things freehand yeah but if obviously if that's not something that you feel comfortable with then by all means use something for a little template yeah it's always good I find to go to your kitchen cupboard agreed egg cups cups Saucers, they're yes. always the right size, aren't they? It, and nice I, and round. I always go to, to things I've got in the cupboard first before I ever think, do I, you know, to yeah. actually make a proper template. Yes. Always. Jam jar lids. Yeah. There's always something that's about the right size. So on my piece of backing, I'm then going to attach the other side of the Velcro. Okay. At this point. So just to the back end. Yes, because I don't want to see the stitching of the Velcro on the no front way. of my yeah. planet. That is not a very sharp needle uh, pin, that isn't. Let's find a better one. Some of these are very... Vel uh, hook and loop mm. is always very thick, isn't it? Yes. Yes. That's it. That's a better one. I actually tend to use glue or tape to hold hook and loop on when I'm stitching it more than pins. Because it is, it, I always bend the pin if I try and put a pin through. So I'm just You're just sewing like a rectangle. I am just sewing a little, mm -hmm. yeah, little rectangly square. Because it's all on the back, it doesn't have to be super neat, does it? My pin's managed to move it a little bit, so it's not dead central. Don't matter. But will be okay. 
Right, and then, I, now this is the bit I always have to think about, so I'll get it the right way around. So your Velcro is going to go face down onto your planet with the wadding on the back. Mm -hmm. We're going to stitch round it, leaving a little gap so we can turn it round. Oh, okay. Then hopefully the Velcro will be on the back. <laughs> it isn't always <laughs> I'm when I do this. I'm trusting you completely, Catherine. <laughs> and um, then we can just, I, on my little sun, where's my sun? I top stitched round just to keep it all closed. And I just felt that was kind of the neatest way to do it. That's so that everything, great way of doing everything the was play. enclosed. Mm. So I've just got a really small seam so that I don't lose too much of my planet. And I'm yep. just going to always round. And like you say, you could always mark this using a erasable pen, couldn't you? And then just stitch on the line that you've drawn. Absolutely. So how much of a gap have you left at the I've left end? a very small gap. We'll see if it's enough. Mm. Just only because you want it to be as little as possible, so you've got as little to Agreed. try and yes. fiddle in at the end. The kit Because they're quite small bits, aren't they? They are small. They are small. The, the kit that uh, Catherine's showing us is the Night Sky Solar System kit. You're getting a fabric panel there. You're getting half a metre of fabric in that gorgeous, sort of really regal purple. And then you're also getting a pack of polyester craft wadding, uh, which is actually 40 inches square. So you're actually getting, you're getting plenty. Lots. Yeah, you're actually getting that wadding for free. The price is £22.47. And of course, Catherine's showing us two different examples of how the panel could be used. One with fixed appliques. One that's a bit more interactive with a bit of hook and loop tape on the back so you can stick the planets down and actually sort of learn the order and which is useful stuff and also fun and engaging for kids and adults. I mean, if you've got a science mad child, yeah, they'd love this. Yeah, absolutely. Love absolutely, it. absolutely. Another thing, I don't think we sell it, but you could have a look for glow in the dark thread. I've used glow in the dark thread for um, Halloween quilts, cool. but it would also be brilliant for um, stitching around the planets and also stitching those circles, all the stars, so that then at night when you're lying in bed, everything kind of glows in the dark. Yes. That's fun. Now I've started with the smallest planet, which is the most fiddly, but I've folded in, I just pressed in those edges. You could slip stitch it closed by hand if mm -hmm. it's starting to be really fiddly. Um, I'm going to see if I can go around on the sewing machine just to top stitch it all in. Another thing you could do is you could use some um, wool or acrylic felt and cut out a circle, stitch your Velcro to the back of the felt and then bond a web applique the planet to the felt and then you have, you've you got that, you know, it doesn't ravel. You haven't, got to, yeah, you haven't got to do the turning round and There's things, There's various options, you? aren't there? Yeah. Pick whichever suits you best. But it's always good to see another method, and I really like this method of turning it through. Is that a bit of top stitching? It is. You are good to do all these things on live TV, Catherine. <laughs> good or a lunatic? One no, or the other. <laughs> no, 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 it's brilliant. I mean, I absolutely loved the, the demo she did earlier on on the half square triangles. <laughs> And that is so good, isn't it, to see every part of the process? Foolhardy. No, Do you know great. what? Sometimes it goes well and sometimes it doesn't. There's my little mercury can go on, on there. Let's move it so you can see. And you've got the little label there as it's well. It's got. I think you've got. I think you've got to keep the labels on, haven't you? Agreed. For this, definitely. Yeah. Oh, if, but if you were going to make it sci-fi, you know, then I would po possibly. I'd then cut the labels off and pretend my planets were somewhere else, like. Tatooine and yes. Asgard. Yes. <laughs> I've heard of both of those, I think. I think they're the only two I've heard of. Yes. <laughs> but my, I mean, my... The first one's Star Wars, isn't it? The first it? one's Star Wars. My boys are very into Star Wars. Oh, my husband and my very. son are very into Star Wars. And then we all like Marvel's universe. Yeah. So... I bumped into a friend the other day. I was out shopping and I wasn't expecting to see her. And I bumped into her coming down an escalator. We were chatting. And then she saw another 
friend who she used to work with. She did a lot of extra work in f film and TV, and so did the friend. And he was very tall and slim. And as he walked away, she said to me, Stormtrooper. And I went, you're kidding. She went, Stormtrooper. Oh, how exciting. Mm, <laughs> how exciting. Isn't it? You have to be very tall to be a Stormtrooper, Well, I yes, believe. I can imagine. You would. Mm. So the other thing... I'd have no chance. <laughs> Play. Well, no, what, me neither. What were those ones that were in sort of, you know, like Monk's Rose with little glowy eyes? Oh, an Ewok. I'd have been one of them. I'd have been an Ewok. <laughs> yes, they were the other way. They were particularly small. They were. Um, the other thing I'm thinking here is if you're doing the Velcro method, if you have some extra Velcro and just use this, I mean, I think you'll have plenty if you've bought it in the kit. Mm -hmm. If you just then... If you're making this into a learning thing, along one edge of your um, panel, yeah. put a row of these so that when they're not being used... Oh, perfect. Yeah, they go up here out of the way. Perfect. That's what you do. So then... So they keep them all... That's yeah, so a you're really not going to cool lose idea. them. And then you could say, right, where does the sun go? <laughs> and hopefully we fan. all bung it in the middle. I'm a big fan. That is such a great idea. I love that. I love that. So that would be that would be the ideal way to do it. And of course, as well, when kids get more confident with that, it, you can do it as a timed activity, can't you? You know, and you can have a sort of a scoreboard of who's managed to name the planets fastest or put them in order fastest. There's always a, a new twist, isn't there? Oh yes. That's such a fun idea. I love it. I think you should make one. It can be your it can be your Christmas Day game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, my Christmas Day game is hiding in the kitchen. <laughs> hiding generally. <laughs> oh. Right. We'll do we'll do satin. Everybody likes satin because it's got the rings. The hasn't rings. It? Yes. Which are are they rocks? I think they are ice ice and rocks and ice things, and aren't rocks. they? Flying round. I mean, it's all, well, do you know what? It blows my mind, really. I can't really think about it because it's too big. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Max, you are in absolute love. Max has got back in touch to say, because I asked, Max, can you tell me why Pluto has been redefined as a planet? Mm. Max has said, sorry, guys and girls. It's a long explanation, which I'll try to shorten. Oh, why? I never do. Um, why use one word when you can use a thousand? Basically, they changed the definition and then went back to the previous ones. Oh. So they changed the definition of what is a planet. Oh, OK. To, so that they could so include Pluto. Pluto. Could, oh, well, that's oh, inclusive. That's nice. <laughs> That makes me feel all warm and fuzzy. I think this is the thing. I think this is my problem. It's it's all very intangible, isn't it? And really, yeah. we're mostly just making it up because yeah. we don't really know. Well, I mean, there are some very clever people out there who I assume know um, more than me, definitely. Well, they know a lot more, but they don't know for certain. But the article is... Yes, Pluto is a planet, says NASA scientist at the site of its discovery 91 years ago this week. It's probably not the whole title, but it probably is the whole title. But yes, Pluto is a planet. Well, Max, you thank heard you it so here much. Yeah. I think we're groundbreaking here. <laughs> this is better than Newsnight or CNN, I think. I certainly find it more interesting, personally. <laughs> right, how many in am I doing Saturn then? Four in. One, two, right. three, four. Let's put it up here. Let's get it in We've the We've got a message here. from Kerry. Uh, my 11-year-old boy says he remembers the planets by saying, my very energetic mother just swam under noodles. Oh, that's a now, good one. Now, Kerry, that's what I could remember. <laughs> Kerry, are you the very energetic mother? Show us your backstroke. <laughs> that is absolutely brilliant. I love I it. Like Thank that you. One. Thank you, Kerry's son. Um, clever stuff, isn't it? Uh, collector's been in touch from Lancashire to say, Hi, both. Great show this morning. Do you sell the metallic thread? Can't seem to find. Well, we do have this gorgeous set of Gutterman metallic thread. Well, it's a. Uh, combination of metallic threads machine embroidery threads and some bobbin fill so it's a really really good collection you get 200 meters of each and in total you're getting 16 16 and then two metallics and two bobbin Gutterman's there we go the ones I used on amazing yeah. yeah so you've got 
So you've got gold and silver metallic. Recommendations on needle, please, Catherine. For metallic threads. Well, I used my normal needle. Did you? Is that wrong? It's possibly because oh. I didn't know any better. What would you use, dear? Well, <laughs> <laughs> you can get um, embroidery machine needles. Yes, you and can. And you can get metallic needles. Um, and they have a deeper scarf. So, so running down the front of the needle, there's a hollow and the hollow, the thread will sit in that hollow. And basically, as the needle's going through the fabric multiple times, if it isn't sitting in that hollow, it's just on the running down the edge of the needle, it will rub against the fabric every time it goes through. A metallic thread in particular will shred and break. Whereas if you use a metallic needle, it has that scarf, that, uh, that hollow, and the thread will run down it and it protects it. Second little cocoon. Yes. yes, I mean, there are needles for every job. Mm. And I mean, I don't use metallic threads very much, yeah. which is why I haven't got the right needle. But um, if you were going to a lot, anything you've got a lot of, yeah. you, you use a lot, you should use the right needle, definitely. Absolutely. That um, threads it, by the way, on screen at the moment, 35 99 and you're getting 20 reels. 16 colours of embroidery thread, two metallics, a silver and a gold, and then two reels of bobbin fill, a black and a white, which is really fine and brilliant for um, countering an embroidery or metallic thread. Now then, we've got these wonderful panels available as a bundle. This is the best value. Uh, you can buy them individually, but this is the best value way to buy them. Um, this isn't the one we're working with, right? Yeah, exactly. So these are in addition to that um, Constellations wall hanging. So this is the big fat quarters. So you've got planets, kind of constellations, starry sky, and this is almost like a map of the solar system. That I think it might be my favourite. Love this. It's all gorgeous. Yeah. Really cool. So these would be great for things like bags, tablet covers. Uh, you could piece them. So that's one of the panels that you're getting. And these are sort of extra large fat quarters. On its own, $19.99. Then you've got your stripes. And as I say, I particularly like the fact that these stripes are not all the same width. You've got some wide stripes and some narrower stripes. But the way they've been put together is just superb. Well, I suppose I'm saying that this is kind of three different, if I move this one over a little bit, I see this as one whole strip of fabric. Yeah, but actually it's three different colours. There's a really deep blue, a sort of an azure, and then a pink. Um, but because the planets have been printed across all of it, I would use this as one whole wide stripe. But still, really clever, aren't they? So if I'd got all of them, I would use this as a centre and make a medallion quilt oh, with Oh, gosh, them. yeah. And use all the lovely strips around it. I think that would be really lovely, wouldn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> that is a lovely fabric. So inspiring, that. Kerry's got a tip from her 11-year-old. Another. <laughs> oh, this is for remembering the compass. Aidan also, Aidan is Kerry's son. Thank you. Thanks, Aidan, by the way, for sending in these tips. Brilliant. Aidan also says to remember the compass points. He says, naughty elephants swimwear. <laughs> like it. Very good. Very good. My, my one for that is um, never... Um, <laughs> No, Never eat shredded wheat. Yes. That was the one I always used to say. <laughs> I do very bad at remembering them today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're really good on mnemonics, aren't you, Catherine? Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. But we love you, Catherine. We love you. <laughs> this these are the squares. <laughs> This is the final part of our bundle of three panels. This is the one you're getting for free. It's my favourite. 
This is my favourite, without a doubt. Look at that. These are the squares. You get 40 squares. You get all the planets, but you also get those backgrounds. You could cut them up and piece them together. You could quilt it as a whole piece of fabric. You could just turn it into a door banner or wall hanging, something like that. A door banner. Yeah. <laughs> Door That's banner. a new invention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, like in Japan, they have the banners that hang down the oh, centre yes. of the door. You usually have two. But you have to have one down the centre. Um, Max is messaging to say straight from talking about the smallest planet in the system. Uh, we have we have just got to notice that I happen to be wearing the biggest Remembrance Day poppy in the solar system. It is pretty big, isn't it? This was crocheted for me by my lovely friend Carrie. It's all relative, isn't it? It's all relative. <laughs> uh, um, uh, when you're top stitching, if you yeah. choose to do top stitching, uh, my tip for that would be um, on your machine, quite often on the machine foot, there's a little groove on your uh, notches on your machine foot and line your edge of, of your fabric up with one of those and keep your eye on it and that will keep you nice and straight. Great tip. I love top stitching. Yeah. I add it to as much as possible. Fab. A uh, question from Carol. Morning, folks. I thought I'd make this panel for my grandson who is learning about space at school. Is there any indication where the planets go? No, the there, there isn't. Yeah. So it, when it comes, it comes like that. So with nothing on it. I'll open it so out. it's up to you to decide whereabouts you want them. Um, but in terms of the order that but the planets in, in go... the order, I mean, you want to get them in the right order. So when I did when I did this one, wherever pliqued them on, I placed them all out first just to make sure. I got my bonder web on the back and laid it out on my ironing board and then placed them round to make sure they were all going to fit nicely yeah. Yeah. before I um, sewed them on. So I ironed them all on at once so I knew they fitted. Mm not one at a time and then suddenly discover that, um, you know, Saturn that's quite big didn't make it mm -hmm. <laughs> or anything. Mm -hmm. But it's up to you. I felt the spiral was quite a nice way. I really like that. Because that's really a bit galaxy-ish. It is. It is. Yeah. It is. Um, but, but in terms of which point. order they go in, the correct yes. order, we're, we're hammering hard on those mnemonics. <laughs> that, that I can't My remember. My very easy method for remembering where the planets go. That's not even it, is it? No. <laughs> hang on, hang on. It's very easy to find out. My though, very early it? monkeys jumped suddenly under naughty Pluto. And my very easy method just speeds up naming planets. Just speeds up. Write it down, write it down. Quick, write it down. Write it down. But I think your grandson will love it. Message from Adam. Hi, Stuart. Love this fabric. Adam, I love it too. It's really good. It's those purples, isn't it? With the bright, hot orange and the bit of pink in there as well. Really beautiful. But it's not too bright. It's quite soft. It is. This is yeah, quite It is. It's nice. And you could use this for a basis of so many different things, couldn't you? Absolutely. Wall hangings, like you mentioned, combined with maybe the strip panel, make a proper big quilt. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, if you combined it with the fat quarter panel as well, and maybe some solids or something like that, you could add piecing, you could add stars, you could add stripes. You could get really creative with it, couldn't yeah. you? Yeah, absolutely. Applique different things on. You're bound to have loads of things in your stash. Got any bits of metallic fabrics in your stash? It would like look great that, with it, wouldn't like it? Like that. Look really this nice. could be the centre of a big bed quilt. Absolutely. Yeah. Be creative with it. You know, we always like to show you at least one or two different ways of using a panel. But what we all hope in our heart of hearts is that it will sort of spark um, a bit of an idea or a creation in your head and you'll go rogue. I'm never happier than when one of my students goes rogue. Yes, and, and has a good idea that you've not thought of. It's oh, like, oh, brilliant exactly. idea. Yeah, totally nicking that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll turn that into a workshop. Thank you very much. <laughs> but it, And it inspires everyone else, doesn't it? It does. Then? That's why it's so nice to go to workshops because you see what everyone's doing. You do. And you can all learn from each other. So I'm just going to explain how I finished it all off. Um, so I put tab tops on on the applique one, which I I just rectangles and I pressed them in um, and hemmed the edges, and then I 
bagged the whole thing out. So um, my See tab what? tops went on the inside, my backing fabric on top, and then I've st stitched it round, turned it through, and then again, I top stitched all the way around the edge to hold it all together. So did you leave a gap at the edge? I left a gap so that I could turn it round and then top stitch to hold it. And I actually did some top stitching on the inside as well. I Got love my fancy that. stitches going on the machine because <laughs> it's so nice when you can use the fancy stitches. You don't often get to use them, do you? And no. I was like, oh yeah, let's do my I fancy I really stitch. love how you've done that border. Can we see that a little bit closer? It, that it, was a, with a variegated thread as well. That's so cool. Which that's I did so get cool. from Zang Street. Ah, yes. is that, is it, they call it serpentine stitch or? Something like well, that. it was just one on my machine that's yeah. a curvy one, but I just thought it was nice. And I mean, there's real opportunities to do do lots. You can really go to town and try all those fancy stitches out that you don't get to use, really. Yeah, it's really cool. That bagging out method, just going to give you, there, there are several different ways. Um, you can leave a gap on the outside. What I sometimes like to do um, is my backing, I'll actually it's always bigger anyway than I need it, and I'll cut it down the middle, rejoin the two halves, oh, the and halves leave a middle? gap in the middle, ah. maybe an eight-inch gap in the middle. Then sew all the way around the outside edge, turn it through to the right side, through that gap down the centre, and then slip stitch that closed. Only because I can never get the edge to look as straight and neat as the rest of it. So if you put it on the back, you hide it yeah, away. Yeah, that's outside. a really good idea. If you want to get it really straight and neat, actually press your seam allowance on both sides before you stitch it, and then that line will still be there it's perfect, when isn't you it? Um, turn it round. Good tip. Yeah. I'll try that. <laughs> I'm going to try that. Brill. Best idea ever from C. Just called C. Maybe that is C's real name. Possibly place the chart, the planets, at the time of the child's birth. Wow. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So presumably you can research the position of the planet at a particular day, a particular time, wedding day, yes. significant birth, something like that, and place the planet. I didn't See, know that you could do that, but it's idea. a great idea, isn't it? That yeah. is. We're, I'm voting. That's yes, the best idea of the day. Definitely, yeah. we'll do that. We've all voted. You've won, see. You've won. <laughs> Brilliant. This is well, this is what's great about our community, isn't it? We share. We we all have our own ideas. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. It's a beautiful wall hanging, Catherine. It is. It's lovely. Thank you so yes. much for sharing That's that with okay. us. That's okay. Do you know when you're coming back? When we see well, you again? <laughs> I'm actually on Yarn Lane tomorrow. Oh, I know. Think? Yes. Um, Sewing Street, I'm not sure. A couple of weeks. Okay, cool. I've certainly got the projects. I just can't remember the date. What are you doing on Yarn Lane tomorrow? Oh, we're going Christmassy. Yay! Christmas Yay! I'm going to find my Christmas jumper. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> There's a what, sorry? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. We what? saw some lovely projects as we were looking this morning. There's a cat that has a pet cat. It's a knitted cat, but it's actually got a pet cat as well. Oh, I'm not doing that one. <laughs> oh. Now I'm doing some really, really cute tiny mini sweaters. Oh, I'm there. So I'm cute. so there. I love a tiny <laughs> anything. Thanks, Catherine. Thank it's you. been a joy. <laughs> Take care. We'll see you very soon. Tomorrow, in fact. Uh, thanks for joining us on uh, uh, this hour with Sewing Street. Great sort of roundup of the planets. Don't forget to check out your bundles. Uh, don't forget to check out your panels. The one that Catherine is working with or has been working with in the last hour is up there on screen. Uh, you get everything you need really, just add some thread, possibly some Bonder web, but you've got your Night Sky Solar System kit, you've got your fabric panel, which is exclusive to us here at Sewing Street. Uh, you've got half a meter of fabric for the tab tops and the backing, and then you've also get get the wadding and that wadding actually is completely free and super big and much bigger than you actually need so that's awesome thanks for joining us we'll see you after the break with a wonderful clearance hour don't miss it there's some great fabrics
If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. That's the same <laughs> My favourite piece of kit with the sewing is the seam with us. Hello, I'm Janice from Birmingham. I specialise in dressmaking. I used to run a children's shop and I love making children's clothes. My mother encouraged me to sew from an early age. When we were young, we did dressmaking in school. I came to fame was the sewing quarter, but I'm now making also jumpsuits for the ladies and men of all shapes and sizes and it seems to be going for the festivals around the country. See you on the show. In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our website, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Are you a 
fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Hello, I'm Catherine Wright from Leicestershire Craft Centre based in Market Harborough. I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street family. I've been sewing since the age of seven when my mum taught me to sew. I particularly enjoy dressmaking and all through my childhood I made my own clothes uh, including dancing costumes and my prom dresses. But I also enjoy patchwork and bag making and hand stitching and embroidery and really anything textile based. The thing I particularly love about fabric and textiles and stitching is that there is always something new to try, there's always a new technique or a new skill to learn uh, and I really enjoy doing that. My top tip for new sewers is to uh, be friends with your iron. Your sewing also always looks better when it's been pressed and it's not like ironing your own clothes. It's much more, much better than that. And also to uh, build your skills up step by step. Don't launch in with the, with the wedding dress first off. You know, start with a simple dress and build your skills up and then you'll see good results right from the start and feel enthusiastic and carry on sewing. So really, just have a go, have fun. It's all about having fun and enjoying it. Um, so happy sewing. Hi there friends, welcome back to the last hour live here on Sewing Street. It's Remembrance Day and thanks for joining us today for this very special uh, day. Now in this hour we've got a whole hour of clearance uh, products and uh, some amazing bargains actually, some really beautiful fabrics that will um, actually after this show at midnight tonight these will all go onto the clearance section of our website www.sewingstreet.com. Now if you haven't had a look on the website for a while it is a new section, a brand new section on the website called clearance and um, you could really snap up some great bargains. You'll definitely get some fantastic bargains in this hour today. All of these will be underneath today's show. Yeah, and they'll be there till midnight and then they'll go to clearance after midnight. So if you're in the market, that's where you'll find them. Um, but also, of course, I'll be giving you all the details in this next hour. Some wonderful, wonderful pre-cuts, some kits, some bundles um, at an absolutely fantastic price. Now, we do do fantastic prices and in this hour the prices are slashed. However, how would you like to win your entire shopping basket for free? That is a price I can really get on board with. Ten of you today who have bought from Sewing Street and checked out will be entered, every single one of you will be entered into a draw and ten of you will be picked at random to win your entire shopping basket for free. Now it doesn't matter whether you've bought a pair of knitting needles or a fat quarter or a whole quilt kit or a sewing machine or whatever you've bought, could have been our solar system panel collection, you'll win everything for free. 10 people did yesterday, 10 people will win today. So it could well be you. Now then, in our hour today, we've got a whole load of gorgeous clearance products. Now we're gonna start with a 39 pound saving. That's whopping. And that's on the kit that I've got in front of me right now. Now, I was looking on the website yesterday um, thinking, oh, I need a little treat. What can I buy myself? I need a treat. And I was looking at this very quilt pattern thinking, oh, that is lovely. Uh, $197.99, but it's in our clearance show. So that price is coming down. We're taking £39.60 off of this and that brings that price down to £158.39. 
fab bargain there. And 52.79 if you want on uh, three split pays. This is a design by Sherry McConnell. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful range of fabrics from Moda. It's absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? Um, now, the pattern itself features these really kind of big, almost like exploded stars. So half square triangles and squares. So nice, straightforward, easy piecing. But it's that collection of fabrics. They're all from um, a range called Balboa by Sherry and Chelsea for Moda Fabrics. And they're really lovely kind of ditzy prints. So you've got a huge amount of cream and then you've got these lovely prints. Now you've got eight fat quarters, 30 fat eighths. You've got a meter of this fabric. You use this for the binding and then five and a half meters of fabric for the background. So it's a massive, massive kit. Look at that fat eighth bundle. And remember, you're saving £39.60. 60 pennies. 60 pennies. And you're also, of course, getting the pattern included as well. So that's a fantastic bundle. The finished quilt is 81 and a half inches square. So that's a really good size. That's going to go on a double bed. It's going to go on a queen size bed beautifully as well. And of course, you could add borders if you wanted to make it bigger. Got a review from Audrey, who's previously bought this kit, who says, beautiful fabric, looking forward to using it. And that's just when you open the box, isn't it? It's so delightful. Some lovely colours there. You've got kind of aqua and gentle soft purples, some peaches, a very nice soft uh, uh, green, and a little bit of grey, and this almost kind of brownie grey as well. We've got less than 10. We've got less than 10 now. You're shopping, you're checking out your baskets, which is so important. I can't emphasise that enough. That's that kit. I'm going to pop that to one side. I think that's going to sell out. Now, Moda 10-inch charm pack, Words to Live By, by Gingerba. This is one of my personal favourites. It's a gorgeous collection. What's lovely about this is it bridges the gap somewhere between traditional and modern fabrics. Because what you've got is a lovely collection of florals, which are very, very easy to work with, small scale, medium scale, but then you've also got these lovely modern textures that just bring your quilt kind of right up into the 21st century. Now, this uh, collection has never been reduced before. This is its first reduction and we're popping it into clearance. Oh, look at that. We've got some black and white prints in there. We're dropping this price by £10. So it's now £34.99. You've got some lovely blues there, like slaty blues. You've got some gold, or must, sort of like a mustardy print. And then you've got some lovely oranges and pinks as well. It really is a delightful collection, this. £10 off, so from £44.99 to £34.99. And remember too that um, a 10-inch layer cake is like four charm packs. So if you wanted to divide this up and then split it between four of you, you could do that and have like a charm pack each. Maybe set yourself a little, a little <coughs> oh, excuse me, set yourself a little challenge. What could you do with a charm pack? and then come back together again and see what the four of you did. Really lovely that, I like that. Now, we've got some flannel. We've got one called Woodland. Now I've got this open, so I'm gonna show you this. Now there's still plenty of time to make a lovely quilt for Christmas, but also for the winter. This is Woodland Flannel by Ben Bird. <coughs> Excuse me, got a tickle. Um, 
This has never been in clearance before. This is this is first time. And you've got a lovely selection of prints there. And they're all printed on cotton flannel. Now, the difference between um, flannel and cotton, let me just show you first of all in terms of the thickness. So here's regular cotton. Here's brushed cotton or flannel. And you can see quite clearly the difference. So this has got a brushed top surface it's still 100% cotton but what it means is it traps more heat so it makes for a really snuggly warm quilt absolutely perfect if you want something for snuggling under during the cold winter months I mean personally I wouldn't do anything too dramatic with these fabrics I would either leave them as whole squares or I would maybe cut them into three strips mix them up, sew them back together and then trim it down into a, I think you probably get it down to about a nine inch square once you've got them pieced back together again and then sew those, just a simple triple rail fence and then sew them back together. I love that orange plaid. It is absolutely gorgeous. They're so soft. Imagine like children's pyjamas, that sort of lovely, soft, snuggly feel. And also I've noticed as well, I don't know if you have, but the department stores now are absolutely full of flannel duvet covers, pillowcases, flannel pyjamas. There's a real trend at the moment. That's a lovely print. Look at that. That's delightful. Um, Lots of you are checking this one out. It's the first time we've ever taken money off. Um, it won't be around for very long, this. Look at that lovely plaid. Oh, it's delish. So cool. Like I say, you could just sew those squares together. I always like to use a walking foot when I'm sewing with flannel, just because it holds the layers together, even with pinning, it holds the layers together much better when you're sewing and prevents your fabric shifting or creeping. Quarter of that stock's already been checked out. It is absolutely delightful. And it's not just a quilt for Christmas, is it? It's for all through the winter, for snuggling under. And also, if you go camping, what about making a lovely quilt that's dedicated to your camping trips? Mm. So we've just had a lovely suggestion from Hannah, our producer, that was saying, could I patch that together, layer it, quilt it, and then turn it into like a jacket? And you absolutely could. Quilted clothing is so warm and snuggly. It's very, very on trend as well at the moment. Um, you could make something like a duffel coat with a hood. That would be really lovely. And you could piece it together. You could cut it down and piece it together or just piece together the large pieces. You could layer it and quilt it first and then cut out your sections to your jacket. And then all you would do is bind the seams inside and bind the outside edge. So for example, the lower curve on the bottom of the coat, you'd just bind with bias binding. That would be smashing. Um, Hannah, I will be expecting to see the finished coat now. Oh, now that would make a full size coat. Come on, you could, no, you could wear that. <laughs> nice message from Adam. Wow, this is my favorite Riley Blake fabric. It is gorgeous, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. I love the color palette as well. Um, I love that sort of charcoal gray background. I love the browns. I love the orange and the turquoise. It is gorgeous. And you know, if you, Watch Sewing Street occasionally. You might never have seen that before. It's been featured a couple of times before, but we've never, ever taken money off it. It's on clearance now. It's not going to hang around for very long at all. We've got another flannel fabric. Um, it is so warm and fuzzy. It is absolutely beautiful. <coughs> I want to just turn this one over so you can see the designs. So you get 12 different designs in this collection and then you get repeats of each of them. In total, you're getting 42 10 inch squares. So you've got um, one that's a bit like uh, Fair Isle, like a Christmas jumper in a green, a red and a black. You're getting the little snowflakes. 
you're getting Christmas presents and then you're getting that wonderful gnome for Christmas <laughs> design. It's $39.99 now with the discount. So actually, how much is that saving? £10. Yeah, you're getting a £10 saving on that. And again, have you got the grandchildren coming to stay or your kids coming to stay for Christmas? What a way to welcome them to have made a special snuggly, I mean, not just a quilt for Christmas, but snuggly brushed cotton flannel quilt just so you can all get on the sofa together and all snuggle under it, watch a Christmas movie. What's your favourite Christmas movie, Hannah? Love Actually. Uh, director ha Emma, favourite Christmas film? Elf, you and I are twins, I'm telling you. Everything about us, it's exact, we could swap heads. My favourite Christmas movie is Elf, Emma's too. What about you, what's your favourite Christmas movie? Is it Home Alone? A lot of people like Home Alone at Christmas. I've never, ever seen Home Alone. Now, there's so many, so many important films I've never seen. I've never seen Dirty Dancing. I've never seen any of the Star Wars films. Sorry. What's the really old one that stars where the heaven, uh, the the angel comes down from heaven? It's a Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah, that's a lot of people's favourite Christmas movie, isn't it? Christmas film. And I also love A Miracle on Thirty. Fourth Street? Is it? Th <laughs> I think it's a miracle on 34th Street. I want to say 32nd Street, but I think it's 34th Street. But that is lovely. It's called Gnome for Christmas. It's a 10 inch charm pack, 42 pieces. Now, if you just lay those out and sew them in six rows, 72, six, seven, 42, yep, six rows, seven. Uh, that would make a great big quilt, wouldn't it? Lovely snuggle quilt. We've had a message from Jan, who's in Lancashire. Uh, already have those woodland tenants charms. Still not decided what to make. Like the idea of a quilted jacket, but I'd need another pack. A smiley face. Oh, Jan, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Save yourself £10. Buy it today. Lots of you are. Now, rainbow fruit. Rainbow fruit. Now, I've actually got... I've got the 10 inch stacker in front of me. Um, it's by Damask Glove. You get 42 10 inch pieces. I'm just going to flip it over so you can see the designs. But I have also got the uh, two and a half inch strip roll handy um, just so I can show you the designs. Now, the two and a half inch strip roll is also on clearance. So if you love this design, you can get it in 10 inch or two and a half inch. Should be $49.99. At the moment it's $39.99. But I'm gonna crash it. We're gonna crash it down even lower. So it started at $49.99. It's now $34.99. So you're saving £15. There's sushi. There's bubble tea. There's stripes. There's sprinkles. There's ice lollies. And this looks like dragon fruit to me. <laughs> you know the seeds you get in dragon fruit? And then you've got all these lovely blue shades, pinks, aquas, um, lovely sunny yellow. It's just beautiful. I'm definitely thinking picnic -y quilt, summery. Or it would just make the most gorgeous, playful um, quilt. I guess I would say for a tween. You know what I mean? That sort of difficult age, <laughs> aren't they all? <laughs> but in terms of making a quilt for like grandchildren or kids, you know, I think up to about the age of maybe 10, it's quite easy to make a quilt. And I think it's quite easy to make quilts for adults, but between about 10 and 18, Bit of a difficult age, generally. Um, but for quilt, I think this would work really well because it's kind of fun, fruity, foody, the colours. It's not babyish, but it's not super adult either. It's playful, it's fun. Yeah, lovely. Love, 
excuse me, I love Riley Blake fabrics. <coughs> I'm just gonna have a bit of tea. Mm. This is the biggest price drop on any of our 10 inch stackers that we've got so far, so far. I'm just teasing you now, aren't I? Oh. Now the design roll I just packed up really beautifully. We're gonna look at now. Yeah. Well, now you say I packed it up beautifully, but I mean, did I? Did I really? Did I? Is that packed up beautifully? We've seen worse, in fairness. <laughs> Is that right? Two forks and a friend, apparently. That's how you get a strip roll back together. I don't believe that. Two forks and a friend sounds like a great night out. Vermicelli, I'm thinking. Spaghetti. Absolutely lovely. I just love this roll. This should be $49.99. It's already gone to $39.99, but you know what we're going to do. You know what we're going to... Look at that one. We're going to crash that price. It's going down. It's going down to $34.99. So now you're making a saving of £15. And look at all these joyful, playful designs. I love the sushi one. What about lunch bags or a backpack for college or school? Feeling fruity? Every day. I love the stripes too. That's adorable. And of course, a strip roll, you know, you can just piece together, make bigger pieces of fabric and then cut out things like wide borders or the front and back panels for a duffel bag or anything like that at all. The um, tossed fruit or fruit salad looks great on the blue background, doesn't it? And again, that that rainbow stripe and these triangles is just gorgeous. Love this. Sprinkles, anyone? Cupcake, anyone? And then you've got the lovely ice lollies. Oh, this takes me back. 1970. Not, well, no, actually, I wasn't born in 1970. 1976, a hot summer's day. That sound of the ice cream van. I think 1976 was the hottest summer, wasn't it? Or it was certainly very hot. Oh, that's made me feel young. <laughs> John talks about the hottest summer, doesn't he? I remember, I'll tell you what I remember about it. I remember we had an absolute plague of ladybirds. There were ladybirds over every surface in our garden one day. I remember my dad calling my brother and I out into the garden to look at them. And they were just crawling over everything. It's quite a beautiful sight. <laughs> but it was so hot. It was so hot. Oh. So there we go. Two forks and a friend. Where's the friend? Where's the fork? Honestly, hopeless. I'd be better off just, I'd be better off with a spoon, a spatula and no friends. That does actually sound like Friday night. <laughs> there we go. Oh, oh yeah. No, I'm just giving, I'm giving up, giving up. There we are. Now then, Orifil. Oh yes, 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 yes. Now this is a collection of six threads from Orifil. Now we love Orifil threads at Sewing Street. This hasn't been opened, so I better not open it. This has never been reduced before. It's called Hoffman's First Stitch. And you're getting f uh, six really large spools. Now they're 50 weight cotton. And you're getting 1,422 yards of cotton on each reel. And they're on those iconic Orifil orange spools. You get an orange, grey, a cream. You get a chartreuse green, a lilac and a blue. And it's quite a slaty blue. £47.99 at the moment. This is really premium thread here, but we're going to crush that price. Over £10 is coming off. £34.99. Wow, that's a bargain. 
That's a bargain. Now remember, it's not cream actually, it's kind of like a pale lemon yellow. Brilliant for piecing. The grey as well would be absolutely superb. All of them can be used for piecing, but also top stitching, quilting, applique. And they are really, really big spools. On each one, you get 1,422 yards, which is a whole lot of thread. Do those spools ever run out? Eventually. Eventually. There'll be a thing at the end, won't there? A sad day that would be. So that's your Aurifil thread, Hoffman's first stitch. Ah, loads of you coming in for that. That would be 1,300 metres on each spool. That is a massive amount of thread, isn't it? When you think about your typical reel of thread is either 100 metres or maybe 150 metres of thread, but this is 1,300 metres of thread. Half of the stock has gone straight into your baskets. Check them out. I know there's probably something else that I'm going to get to that you'll want, but if you check that out, you've guaranteed yourself that product and it doesn't mean that you're going to end up paying another little postage. You only pay once. You know that. Brilliant. I love a thread collection and I'm saying it again and again and again, but thread it needs to be part of your stash. Um, I went through the pain just recently of running out of cream thread, running out of green thread. And, um, and, and normally when I want to do some sewing, I can literally just grab all the things I need and I'm away. Imagine the horror. You've been there. I'd got all my fabrics. I'd got my wadding, my bosal in our form, whatever I needed. No thread. No thread. Can't do anything. <laughs> Now, um, we've just Googled the thread collection and there's a really nice article we're going to show you uh, the sort of story behind the collection and it's the history and the story of Hoffman Fabrics. Oh, hello. Tom Selleck there. These are the, this is the collection that the threads are based around. Um, they call it Hoffman's First Stitch. Nice article that. I shall give that a read later on. Very nice. And there are those threads. Hmm, gorgeous. I love that. And it's a great opportunity to get a massive amount of thread, a massive amount of not just any thread, but Aurifil, really premium quality. And you're getting six large spools and a really useful range of colours there. Lovely message from Angie in Norfolk. Hi, Stuart just purchased the Aurifil. Angie, you do right. It's a great collection, isn't it? And so much thread. I do challenge you to use all that thread up. It will take a while. And don't forget that when it comes to quilting a quilt, uh, something like that orange, that would blend with so many different colours. The rainbow fruit, for example, if I was quilting this, I'd be going straight for a bright orange or a bright green or a bright blue, something like that. You've got bright orange, bright green, bright blue in your Aurifil collection. We've never reduced this before. When you've all checked out, there'll be eight left. And that is nothing. That is nothing. So I would really recommend that you're quick. They'll all find a home today, I think. Now, very, very close to my heart, this next book, Sensational Quilts for Scrap Lovers. Well, you know me, I love scrap quilts. I absolutely love a scrap. <laughs> Only when it's quilts. These are 11 easily pieced projects and there are colour and cutting strategies. Now today's been all about colour, hasn't it? Can't believe we're actually going to reduce this. Look at that. That is sensational. And, oh my goodness, I need this book. Look, easy methods for cutting. 
1699 are you kidding me look at that have you got scraps <laughs> silly question okay let me ask another question are your scraps threatening to overtake not just your sewing room but your whole house your whole home this quilt i my tim holtz neutrals and then all of my scraps what a great idea for a quilt that is gorgeous aerial view it's called quite liberated piecing oh there are some beauties look at that circle gets the square that is fantastic joan deputy joan this is right in our ballpark and i love the fact that something like that looks really difficult to make and you think do i need loads of odd templates the piecing methods are superb knit stitch i mean you won't necessarily have these exact scraps just use what scraps you've got oh this is superb i love it this is an amazing book this is an amazing book this is so cool look at all those this one <gasps> amazing absolutely amazing now we've got some decent quantities of this book but i would really recommend it to you we don't often demo from this book because it does rely on scraps and um you know everyone's scraps are different but this is absolutely beautiful i love the ideas in this quote and i love the piecing ideas in this book and look color theory all been about using colors today love a flow chart ding dong absolutely brilliant super book that i should be getting that book yeah definitely love that really love that that sensational quilts for scrap lovers right up my street now yeah Moda Mill Creek. That's this one here, isn't it? So this is the Moda Mill Creek um, strip roll, jelly roll. Now this is very traditional. It's lovely. Oh, okay. Now our producer's just saying it's only ever been on air three times before. It doesn't really qualify it to be in clearance, but it is. Might well be a mistake. Who knows? Who cares? Just get it. Uh, lovely soft creams and tans, beautiful lilacs and purples, and then this most gorgeous selection of greens through into soft kind of earthy browns. It is really lovely. Uh, you're getting 42 two and a half inch strips and it's just 34.99. So price-wise, that's dropped by £10. Fantastic. Absolutely brill. Um, bit confused about that one because it has only been on air three times before, but it's delightful. Browns, greens, beautiful purples, and then creams. My friend Val would love this. She's a purple and green girl. I was talking actually with um, Catherine earlier on and um, we were talking about the French braid quilts. They are lovely and they use two and a half inch strips usually where you kind of, it almost has like a plaited effect. You sew the strips on and then trim the sides down. French braid quilt, Google it. Really good way of using a strip roll. You get a stunning quilt. It's not a difficult make at all. Um, it's just straight line sewing um, and yeah, really, really effective. That's a beautiful, beautiful jelly roll that. The $34.99. Nice message from Jan. That would sit so nicely with the Moda Sweet Violet that I have. Too tempting. Yeah, Jan, I absolutely agree with you. Moda Sweet Violet and this Mill Creek, a garden, would work beautifully together. And of course, the thing is, you know, that 42, two and a half inch strips makes a decent sized quilt. 
but not a queen size or king size quilt. So if you wanted one of those, then you would want to either buy two jelly rolls the same, plus some backing fabric or some, some additional piecing fabric, or mix two different jelly rolls. And that's what I'd be inclined to do. So you've got even more variety. So then in your quilt, you might end up with 60, 70, 80 different fabrics. And that for me is the most exciting kind of quilt that's got all those different eclectic fabrics mixed together that still go beautiful, beautiful. Mm. Now we've got Happy Days. Oh, this is lovely. And again, a nice traditional range, this. This is by Sherry and Chelsea. Do you remember we had the quilt kit? I'll just quickly remind you. Sherry McDonald quilt kit. Same, same team. I think, are they mother and daughter? I think they're mother and daughter. This is gorgeous. Now, if you like Bonnie and Camille, I think you'd really like this. If you like Bonnie and Camille, uh, there's some lovely kind of slaty tones, nice deep tones in the back. And then a lovely soft, almost like a mushroom. Uh, and then a nice sort of golden mustard. And then through into these, look at that. Really rich, deep orange with little touches of fresh green and yellow. And then through into more peachy tones. And then we're into, oh, lovely aquas that really adds a lovely spring, fresh look, doesn't it? This is absolutely lovely. Don't forget, you know, I know we're in autumn heading into winter now, and I know we all get a little bit, I certainly do, get very focused on winter and Christmas. But clearance, that is just going to sit waiting for you. And, and I know, you know, after Christmas, <laughs> for me, it's straight after Boxing Day, I start thinking about spring. And I want a spring project to lift that kind of midwinter gloom. I want to think about the days I'm going to spend in the garden and the picnics I'm going to go on and the trips to the beach. And I'm ready for some fresh spring colour. Now, this is on clearance price, 35 99 instead of... £44.99. So you're saving £9. Now then, Sunday Stroll. It's a design roll. Uh, let's have a look. Is it this one here? Oh, yeah. Now, this is lovely. Now, this is Bonnie and Camille. And you'll see, you know, that it has a similar kind of flavour, different colours, but it's that mix of lovely soft florals, a little bit vintage looking, uh, with some little geometrics in there as well. Now, this should be $44.99. It's $35.99, so you're saving £10. You're getting 40 Is it 40 Yeah. 40 two and a half inch strips. And Bonnie and Camille, I mean, Bonnie and Camille, people collect their fabrics. They're always coming up on the internet, sort of past designs for astronomical amounts of money. Um, yeah, people collect Bonnie and Camille fabrics. Yeah, yeah. They, they have a real following, Bonnie and Camille. And uh, what a lot of people want to do is have every fabric collection that they've ever done in a jelly roll or something like that. Love that smart pinstripe and plaid. This is fun with little strawberries on it. Florals, you've got these lovely soft aqua tones. Pinks, there's always some red I think in Bonnie and Camille or reddy orange as well which I love. Fresh greens, a bit of navy as well. They often have navies in their collections. Look at that lovely plaid there. I mean it's gorgeous. This is summery isn't it? Where happy days for me is spring, this is now moving into summer. So a gorgeous summery quilt. Um, absolutely lovely. <coughs> this would mix really nicely with something like a solid white. Just a nice, fresh, solid white. Uh, and that would be absolutely perfect. Lovely bit of piecing. I did a quilt pattern, oh, years and years ago, called Quicker by Tube. 
and I do a video actually on, on YouTube called Quicker by Tube and uh, this would work so well for a picnic quilt. There we go. Yeah, I love a picnic quilt. I, because I mean picnic, well, because quilts can just go in the washing machine, can't they, most of them. Um, so I make a lot of quilts that I then use for picnicking or just lying in the sun or going to the park and reading a book, something shady under the tree. Am I making you feel wistful about summer? <laughs> Funny, isn't it? Funny, isn't it? I always wish in the summer when I'm out in the sunshine, I wish my body was like a battery. I always think about it and I could sort of soak up the sunshine and the warmth. And then in the winter, I could just kind of turn a switch and that lovely sunny, warm feeling could radiate back out. Never happens. <laughs> oh. Now then, what should we look at next? We've so many more clearance lines still to look at. Tula fat quarters. Oh, yes, now then, do we have fat quarters? Oh, yes, 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 yes. <coughs> this is absolutely glorious. Um, should I leave this closed or can I open it? Great. So naughty, I love opening the packs. This is delish. Now, Tula Pink is one of my favourite free spirit designers. She's very well known for bright, joyous colour. But this range called Line Work is really about black and white. There is a little bit of colour in there, but take a look at these. Now, it should be $59.99. $49.99, I'm sorry. should be $49.99. We've got it on special at $39.99. You've got this black and charcoal print. You've got this big polka dot, black with a white polka dot. This is peacock feathers, little glimpses of colour peeping in there. You've got these leaves. This is glorious. I love that, almost like a um, malachite or a geo stone, yeah. This is glorious, this little hexagon print that has all different rainbow colours throughout it. A black and white stripe, well I wish I could mine that because black and white stripe I would use forever. Sashings and bindings, really good. It's a little floral, there's one with zebras on it. Another polka dot there, this time with a white background and black spot. This is a white print, but it has a, a white print on it. You can't really see it on TV. And then this one right at the end, which has really fine, like aqua graph paper lines, and then an all over print. We do actually have quite a nice picture of all of the different prints together, don't we? That is really lovely. Now then, um, Free Spirit sometimes produce charm packs, jelly rolls, strip rolls, uh, or 10 inch stackers, and this is what we've got here, in one fabric, and that's what we've got right now. So this is Tula Line Work, should be $44.99, it's $35.99. Now then, you might be looking and thinking, why do I want 40, 42, 10 inch squares all in black print? Well, lots of you have already got them in your basket, so you understand why. But what you would do, for example, if I just grab the rainbow fruit. So if you're going to make a quilt, you might well, so then you're going to pair one of these and one of these right sides together cut it up, switch the fabric, sew them back together again for your blocks. Or you might, I mean, Missouri Star Quilt Company are often putting two squares together like this, sew all around the outside edge, cut them down into half square triangles, either four or eight, and trim them to size. Um, so having, you know, so often we say with a jelly roll, a strip roll, a 10 inch layer cake, a stacker, mix these with a neutral. But if you're going to do that, you've got to start cutting those fabrics up. Whereas if you buy a stacker that's one neutral colour that's going to go with your um, patterned fabrics, that job's already done. 
And at 35.99, it's a real bargain. It's such a time saver. And you get a lot of fabric in there too. It's actually a great way of buying it. And you can see it's a black background with this charcoal gray print of kind of swooping swallows, stars, polka dots, hearts, classic Tula images. I think a lot of them are based on tattoos. Tula has some tattoos. I know she's really keen on tattoo art. And so there's a bit of a tattoo element in there. Now we've also got a white on white version of this. Now this I think is even more versatile. This would work. I mean that black one would work brilliantly with Kaif, wouldn't it? Really well with Kaif. Um, the white on white. You get a really good idea, actually, from that picture. It's a fantastic picture, whoever took that, by the way, to capture the white on white print. Swallows, stars, hearts, those little tattoo-like motifs, little suns that just add some extra interest. Now, you can combine those with a layer cake or a 10-inch stacker, but you could also combine those with your scraps, but you just want to have, like, lots of 10 inch squares already pre-cut 35.99 you're saving nine pounds by buying it today on clearance lots of you are checking your baskets out with this in or the black version the dark version it is really useful isn't it now we've got this same idea in design roles now the photographs show the same image, but let me just explain that in the dark design role, is that the one we're going to look at first? The dark design role is 42, two and a half, sorry, beg your pardon, 40, two and a half inch strips. So they're all the same. So this is going to work beautifully with your jelly rolls, your design roll strip rolls. Now, it should be $44.99. You're going to pay $35.99. Again, this is a great thing to have in your stash. If you've got a jelly roll or a strip roll that you haven't been quite sure what to do, or you've got a design in mind, but you have to cut 42 and a half inch strips of solid to go with it, not anymore. This is already cut out ready. You could also combine this. If you've ever made a jelly roll rug, and typically you use one jelly roll and you sew it together and then wind it round and round. Um, but what's really nice to do is to use some of these in with it. So you maybe use two or three of the same colour of jelly roll or strip roll first and then add a couple of strips of a solid or a semi-solid like this. And then what it does is it breaks up that strip roll in the rug. So you end up with concentric circles or ovals working out. And you can also, of course, end up then making either a larger rug or if you wanted to have one either side of a bed and they could sort of match, not match, but from the same fabric collection, you could do that just by combining one of these with one of your jelly or strip rolls. So that's a dark option. We've also got it in the white on white version. Same price, same saving. Should be $44.99, but we've crashed the price. This is clearance and it's gone down to $35.99. So again, 40 uh, two and a half inch strips and that's by the width of fabric. So about 42 to 44 inches long, well, same length as any quilt weight cotton fabric really. They're 100% cotton and they have that print on them that is very difficult to show on TV but the photograph shows it rather well. From Tula Pink. Now then, we've got some kits. Yeah, these are from Alison Marion's daughter. Am I right? Yeah. So we've got these little um, travel sewing kits from Alison Marion and her daughter, Becky. Now, which one would you like to look at? Or are they the... Oh, blue. Yep. I'm just going to check. Yep, blue. So what you've got in here... Shall I open it up? Hmm. So in here, you've got a whole kit and it's to make a travel sewing kit. So you've got a um, little uh, needle book and pin cushion, a little fob. You get loads in the kit. 
under 15 pounds this it's crashing it's crashing it's crashing there you go 14.99 you've got pin cushion sand you've got other bits and bobs in there i don't want to open it because i don't want to spoil it for whoever gets this but you know you've got this little tape measure braid you've got some safety pins and pins and needles to go inside you've got your lovely fabrics and you've also got your batting and full instructions, which of course you could make time and time again. You can see there what you're getting. It's a gorgeous little set. Ah, that little bag there is for button. Ah, it's got buttons and things in it, I understand. Really super little kit that. For $14.99, again, this would make a lovely, <laughs> excuse me, lovely Christmas present. Granddaughter grandson want to get them into a bit of sewing mm, i really like that and it's a great price as well now we've got it in a couple of other different color options mm, i think that's this one yeah uh yes do you have the picture showing the colors or shall i open yeah oh yeah like that $14.99 that price is crashing too. That's lovely. Really like those fabrics. And you've got a little bit of simple piecing there on the front. Or maybe even a plique on the front, I think. That's cute. Nice little set of projects. That's beautiful. Really lovely. Do you get those little fold-up scissors? I'll open the next one and we'll have a look. So this next one, let me just, I'm going to very carefully, I probably won't, no, I won't be able to open it really carefully, but anyway, I want you to see what you're getting. <gasps> yes, you do. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look at this. So you do. Look, you get, all of your papers for piecing your hexagons, large and small. A tape measure. That's amazing. You get your fold-up scissors, embroidery floss, ribbon, buttons. And then you're also getting, of course, fabric, your sand for your pin cushion, felt, fabric, waddings. That is a well put together kit. That is stunning that you get all of that and you get a tape measure and scissors as well. Ah, now then I see that that large hexagon at the top that's kind of on its own, that is obviously a cover for the tape measure, isn't it? How superb. Oh, well, that puts a whole new slant. Really good. Look at all that lot. That's super. And that's a really fun colorway. That's nice and bright and cheery, isn't it? The pinks and yellows. Love those. Now then, we've got another little kit here. <clears throat> now then, let's just have a look. 84, I'm presuming that's going to be this one. Yes. So this is a patchwork fabric planter. Upcycled fabric is used to make each kit unique. How about that? I like the idea that the fabric's recycled. I'm going to open the back up. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm just going to have to rip it off. Sorry. There we go. So you're getting your kit. You're getting... Yeah, you're getting kind of pink vintage colours here. You're getting your paper pattern. And you're getting all of your different fabrics in there. They'll all be at random. They'll all be unique. And you get loads of fabric there. And you could use this same method then, couldn't you, to make your own... You well using your scraps. Seven ninety nine. That's all it costs. Beautifully packaged. It's by the Making Magpie, and I just love the concept as well. 
that it's all recycled and re-loved fabrics. Mm. This is a great way, actually, of getting older kids into sewing, I think, because you've got that really important message, haven't you, about finite resources and why throw away when we can use that to make something beautiful and useful. And the whole kind of cactus plant in the house vibe. I mean, my house now in the last year, <coughs> it's like a jungle. I've brought in so many plants now into the house and it really has increased my sort of sense of well-being, I think, in the house, having those plants. Um, and of course, I have started looking, thinking, hmm, fabric planter, that's a thing. Love those. Um, different kit, same concept. But these are more blue colours. So, of course, they will be at random, but they'll be in a sort of broad colour range. One's pinks, this one's blues. Mix and match really nicely, though, don't they? This is also dropping to 7 What a great day to bag a bargain. And all before Christmas as well. That's fab. Really fab. Some very giftable items in this hour, aren't there? Easy to wrap to, which is always a blessing for me because I am very, very challenged when it comes to wrapping presents. <coughs> Thank goodness for gift bags and tissue paper. <laughs> That's what I say. Now then, we've just got a couple of minutes left. Let's do the menu. Yeah, let's talk about tomorrow. 8 a.m. It's Christmas fabrics. And then at 9 a.m. It's penguin and polar bear toys with Barbara McClay. At 10 a.m. Gifts you'll love. I've seen them. You will. At 11 a.m. It's pretty patchwork squeeze pouch with Barbara McClay. I don't know what that is, but I'm intrigued. Anything with squeeze in the name has got me there. And then at 12 p.m. Our lovely Catherine Wright is back with Yarn Lane Christmas Makes. I've seen them. They are absolutely adorable for all you uh, for all you uh, knitters and crocheters yarn lovers like me you'll really enjoy that a great lineup for tomorrow um, don't make any other plans will you i certainly won't i'll be watching well thank you very much for joining me for a really busy morning we've had lots of fun and we've also remembered on this very special remembrance sunday thank you for joining us here at sewing street and i will see you again very soon Mwah.